Hey guys before watching this video, please like share and subscribe. Now, let's start the video. Oh right, I almost forgot. Gradually approaching Inari, you seem to suddenly remember something, and a devilish smile, crept onto his lips. I told you last time, if there's a next time, I'll strike through your head with a single blow. After saying this, Yu's right index finger gently lifted, pointing at Inari's head as if it were a gun. And no. Please don't kill me. Looking at Yu's finger pointed at his own head, Inari's expression had completely collapsed due to fear. He could already imagine that if Yu executed this move, his head would undoubtedly be smashed like a watermelon. Bang! With a mischievous glint in his eyes, Yu looked at Inari, who was about to wet his pants. Suddenly, Yu intentionally made a gunshot-like sound with his mouth. Immediately, Inari collapsed to the ground in front of him. His eyes rolled back, and froth began to emerge from his mouth. He had actually fainted from fear due to Yu's intimidation. TSK. Easily frightened. I wonder how such a guy is going to become a ninja in the future. Glancing at Inari, who had fainted in front of him, Yu disdainfully curled his lips and shifted his gaze to the pineapple-haired boy standing next to him, who seemed completely stunned. By the way, I haven't asked for your name. Since a while ago, you had been feeling like he had seen this kid somewhere before. However, he couldn't quite place it, something seemed off about his face. Aye aye. My name is Irika, Irika Yumino. Seeing Yu's gaze fixed on him, the pineapple-haired boy seemed to awaken from a dream, stuttering and barely able to complete a sentence. Although he was three years younger than you, witnessing the extraordinary power you had just displayed left the pineapple-haired boy astonished. He had never imagined that newcomers to the ninja school could achieve such a level. Erika? So, it's him. Upon hearing the pineapple-haired boy utter his name, you suddenly realized. It was because there was one less horizontal scar on his nose, that's why you couldn't recognize him right away. Irika Yumino, the original series Chunin teacher at the Leaf Village Ninja School, responsible for Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura, and others. He was also Naruto's first life mentor. His parents, who were Jonin ninjas, had both died in the Nine Tails attack. Even though his abilities were average, he played a crucial role in Naruto Uzumaki's growth. Irika, huh? Examining the pineapple haired boy named Irika, Yu's delicate face couldn't help but reveal a hint of helplessness. Getting bullied by two ninja school students, you're quite useless, aren't you? Indeed, Irika's parents were Jonin ninjas from the Leaf Village. However, in the original series, Irika's abilities could only reach the level of a regular ninja school Chunin student. He couldn't even beat someone like Mizuki, who was also a Chunin student ninja. From the perspective of a transmigrator, Irika's abilities were indeed disappointing to the audience and his parents. But there's nothing to be done. Not everyone is born with the natural talent for being a ninja like you. Feeling the contemptuous gaze from you, Irika forced a bitter smile. As someone who had average ninja talent from birth, he indeed felt that he had let his Jonin ninja's parents down. But my dream. My dream is to become a teacher at the ninja school in the future. That would make me content. However, as soon as he mentioned his future dream, the immature face of young Irika immediately lit up with a radiant and eager expression. All right, all right. If it makes you happy. Watching young Irika's face radiate with the light of his dreams, you couldn't help but roll his eyes. Considering that he would be the homeroom teacher for future main characters, you didn't have the heart to discourage him. Mitarashi Anko and Yuzuki Yugao. Turning his attention to the side, you looked at Mitarashi Anko and Yuzuki Yugao. Noticing that the sticky substances under their feet were gradually dissipating, Yu's lips curved into a slight smile. Anyway, thank you for today. After all, these two girls had come all the way to try to stop Inari and protect the newcomer to the ninja school. Although their efforts hadn't been very helpful, it was only polite to express gratitude, right? Yes, it was a matter of courtesy. You impolite brat. However, as soon as Yu's words came out, a cross-shaped mark suddenly appeared on Mitarashi Anko's forehead. 
She clenched her teeth and said, You should address us as senior sisters or seniors. Sure, Anko. Goodbye. Nevertheless, you completely ignored Midarashi Anko's furious glare, turned around with a playful smile on his face, and said, I should be going now. You and Senpai Yugao can handle this mess here. If we have a chance, see you next time. With these words, you left a departing silhouette for the two girls and Irika to see. Damn. What an arrogant little brat. Staring daggers at Yu's retreating figure, Midarashi Anko's bright eyes were filled with malevolence. She gritted her teeth and said, He called you senpai, and me, red bean. He 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 he. Seeing Midarashi Anko beside her grinding her teeth in anger, the charming and lovely Yuzuki Yugao couldn't help but cover her mouth and laugh softly. Her gaze, however, was quietly fixed on Yu's silhouette, which was gradually disappearing under the setting sun. A strange ripple of emotion stirred in her heart. Yakushi Yu. He's truly an interesting person. Time flowed like grains of sand through one's fingers, passing day by day. Ever since becoming a student at the ninja school, you had been diligently studying ninja theory and basic knowledge within its walls. Transformation, shadow clone, and substitution jutsu had all been mastered proficiently by you. These were basic but highly practical ninja arts that could often turn the tide of battle. However, to everyone's surprise, the Uchiha clan's genius, Shursue Uchiha, began to show his astounding talent as soon as he entered the ninja school. Whether it was ninjutsu, taijutsu, weapons, or ninja theory, Shursue Uchiha excelled in all areas, ranking at the top of his class in the ninja school. But what surprised everyone even more was that despite his exceptional abilities, Shursue Uchiha only managed to secure the second position in the school rankings. The coveted first place was firmly held by a previously unknown commoner ninja named Yakushi Yu. This was truly a shocking development. As a result, many curious people started asking around to find out who this mysterious Yukushi Yu was. After their painful lesson from the previous encounter, Inari, Kotetsu, and a few others would almost always avoid you whenever they saw him at the Ninja Academy, as if they had seen a ghost. On this day, at the vast training ground of the Ninja Academy, all the students of Team 3, where you belonged, were assembled. Classmates, today's activity is a real combat exercise, announced the ninja instructor, Shinku Kurinai, looking satisfied as he observed all the students of Team 3 gathered before her. The purpose is to gain real combat experience and identify your individual shortcomings. As all the students of Team 3 had assembled, the instructor, Shinku, nodded in satisfaction and made her announcement. So today's real combat exercise will take the form of an all out brawl. You can choose your opponents and even find temporary allies during the battle. An all-out brawl? Hearing these words from their homeroom teacher, Shinku, the students began to discuss it among themselves. Especially Yu, who could feel several hostile gazes directed at him from the crowd. It seemed that the educational methods at the Ninja Academy during wartime were quite different from those in peacetime. Unfazed by the unfriendly glances around him, you stood among his peers, lost in thought. After all, in actual combat, anything could happen, and this form of real combat exercise would undoubtedly reveal a ninja's adaptability and weaknesses. It's worth mentioning that the instructor for Team 3 was none other than Yuhi, the father of Yuhi Akane, the character from the original series. He was a Kanoha Jonin who had perished during the Nine Tails attack. Although, at this time, Yuhi Shinku had not yet reached the rank of Jonin and was merely an instructor for a team of academy students. However, his strength was already close to Jonin level, making him the strongest instructor at the entire ninja academy. It was precisely because of his confidence in his own strength that Yuhi Shinku dared to use such a potentially dangerous form of real combat exercise to sharpen the skills of the academy students. Then, the real combat exercise begins now. Without any further ado, Yuhi Shinku declared the start of the exercise and positioned himself nearby to observe. Sorry, Yukushi. I didn't mean to. Sure enough, the moment Yuhi Shinku declared the exercise's commencement, a voice came from behind you. 
seizing the opportunity while the surrounding students were busy finding hiding spots in the grass and trees, a fellow student had already rushed up to Yu's back, ready to land a punch. As if he had eyes on his back, Yu's eyes flickered when he faced the expected surprise attack. He lightly sidestepped, narrowly avoiding the punch aimed at his back. Wah wah wah. That hurts. Let go. With a burst of cries of pain, you effortlessly turned around and reached the attacker's back. He grabbed the student's arm and twisted it slightly, pinning him to the ground, rendering him unable to move. Shiranui, you're out. Seeing that a student had been subdued by you within the first two seconds of the real combat exercise, Yuhi Shinku immediately declared the student's elimination. At the same time, a peculiar look flashed in his deep red eyes. As the homeroom teacher for Team 3, Yuhi Shinko highly valued you, who excelled in all aspects, even outperforming the Echiha clan prodigy, Shursue Echiha. He also wanted to gauge Yu's current level of strength through this real combat exercise. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Sharp sounds of slicing through the air echoed. Just as you had just kicked Shiranui out of the exercise, Five or six sharp shuriken suddenly flew through the air and all of them were embedded in Yu's body within moments. Ah. Teacher. That guy Yu has been killed. Being only students of the academy, several surrounding students immediately exclaimed in shock at the sight. Quiet. Watch carefully, commanded Yuhi Shinku sternly, his deep red eyes gleaming with a hint of unusualness. Thud. As soon as he finished speaking, Yu, who had just been struck by the shuriken, turned into a wooden log. Substitution jutsu used quite effectively, Yuhi Shinku remarked with satisfaction. I almost couldn't see when he made the switch. Seeing you perform this substitution jutsu, Yuhi Shinku, who was observing on the side, nodded in approval. Hey, the shuriken from earlier. It has already exposed the hiding spots of all you guys. A plain voice sounded, and you reappeared in everyone's sight. His body turned into a blur, and in an instant, he knocked down several ninja academy students who had thrown the shuriken at him. Ouch. That hurts. Teacher Yuhi. This guy you is too strong. After you had taken down four to five academy students, a group of them approached Yuhi Shin, rubbing the painful areas on their bodies, complaining to their instructor. He's so cool. Go, Yuchan. Take down all these guys. At this moment, witnessing Yu's otherworldly appearance and overwhelming strength, a group of girls watching from the side had become so excited that they were on the verge of fainting. It seemed like they had formed a fan club to cheer him on. Yuchan? Hearing the new nickname given to him by the girls nearby, you couldn't help but smile wryly. Such extravagant phenomena could probably only occur in the world of anime and manga. With these thoughts in mind, you continued to move forward without slowing down his steps. In the chaotic training ground, he strolled like a leisurely walk, effortlessly taking care of one opponent after another. Secret Art, Insect Jar With a shout, a dense swarm of black insects suddenly spread through the air. They closed in on you from all directions. Is this the art of the Aburame clan? These insects seem to be quite weak. It appears they haven't reached their full potential yet. Facing a fellow student, Aburame Shiro, who had suddenly appeared in front of him, and the swarm of insects that surrounded him like a mist, you remained calm. Although the Aburame clan's jutsu was formidable, the level of the academy students was not enough to pose any threat to him. Leaf Whirlwind with a light shout, Yu's body slightly lowered. His powerful legs swept out, creating a fierce whirlwind. This whirlwind immediately swept away all the insects surrounding him, as well as Aburam Shiro, who was right in front of him. Ugh. Teacher. Yu is amazing. After you had defeated several ninja academy students who used different tactics, four to five students came forward, nursing their injuries, and complained to Yuhi Shin. Too awesome. Go, you. Take down all of these guys. At this point, a group of girls watching from the sidelines had become so excited that they were about to pass out. It seemed like they had formed a fan club to cheer him on. You dojo? Hearing the new nickname given to him by the girls nearby, 
you couldn't help but smile wryly. Such extravagant phenomena could probably only occur in the world of anime and manga. With these thoughts in mind, you continued to move forward without slowing down his steps. In the chaotic training ground, he strolled like a leisurely walk, effortlessly taking care of one opponent after another. Amazing. Is this guy really a fellow Ninja Academy student from our year? This time, it wasn't just the group of girls nearby. Even the male students who had already been eliminated were exclaiming in amazement. Indeed. Although it was the time of war, the basic ninja skills of the academy students were quite high. However, when dealing with these low-level brats who hadn't even reached the level of genin yet, you hardly needed to use his thread-thread fruit abilities or other advanced ninjutsu. With his formidable physical abilities and taijutsu skills alone, he effortlessly overwhelmed this group of academy students. Perhaps? Only that geisher sway can make me bring out my true strength? With this thought in mind, faced with one seemingly simple attack after another, you became even more determined to apply for early graduation after mastering all the basic ninja arts. After all, he didn't enter the ninja academy just to mess around or pretend to be someone he wasn't, he wasn't interested in playing house. Are you Yakushiyu? But at that moment, a cold voice sounded. In Yu's momentary distraction, he saw a figure dressed in white swiftly dispatching several academy students around him and blocking his way. Let me see, the one who can overshadow Uchiha Shursui, a genius of the Uchiha clan. What kind of strength do you possess? With flowing jet black hair, a kimono with a black base and white edges, and a surprisingly handsome face, what caught Yu's attention the most were the pure white eyes of the young man before him. Clearly, he was a member of Kanoha's oldest and most prestigious clan, the Hyuga clan. Hyuga Setsuna? Faced with the sudden appearance of the Hyuga clan youth, Yu's initially indifferent gaze finally became a bit more serious. Among all the students in the same year at the Ninja Academy, aside from Uchiha Shursui, who was assigned to another class, this young man named Hyuga Setsuna had the strongest strength. He was indeed a genius ninja of the Hyuga clan, a talent not mentioned in the original storyline. Byakugan. Without further ado, the Hyuga clan youth in front of you formed hand seals. His pure white eyes suddenly widened, and veins on both sides of his temples bulged, revealing a ferocious appearance. You awakened the Byakugan at such a young age? Facing the activated Byakugan of Hyuga Setsuna before him, you felt as if his entire body was being seen through by those sharp eyes, and a hint of surprise appeared on his face. The Byakugan, an ancient bloodline limit of the Hyuga clan in Kanoha. Although its activation method was not as demanding as the Echiha clan's Sharingan, awakening the Byakugan at such a young age was evidence of Hyuga Setsuna's outstanding talent. Be careful. Gentle fist. After activating the Byakugan and noticing that you seemed somewhat distracted, the Hyuga clan youth reminded him. Blue chakra had already begun to emanate from his hands. Gentle Fist, a Hyuga clan secret martial art, the most powerful style of taijutsu in Kanoha. It could directly attack the circulatory system and even pinpoint pressure points when combined with the Byakugan. So, this is the Gentle Fist of the Hyuga clan? Faced with the relentless attacks of Hyuga Setsuna's gentle fist, Yu's body began to retreat as he dodged the blue chakra strikes with difficulty. Unlike the hard fist of the Lee clan that Yu was currently practicing, the Hyuga clan's gentle fist focused on upper body movements, with techniques that primarily protected the lower body. Using their unique gentle fist, they would inject chakra into their opponent's body, damaging their veins and organs. After all, in the normal ninja world, even the most powerful individuals couldn't train their organs. Usually, the internal injuries caused by gentle fist techniques were fatal. Unless you reached the level of the six paths or had a sage's body like Hashirama Senju, or had been modified like Haydn from the Akatsuki. Contrastingly, the Lee clan's hard fist prioritized lower body movements, with techniques that mainly relied on legwork. They used chakra to enhance their explosiveness and destructive power, with swift and fierce movements, inflicting direct damage to the opponent's surface. In simple terms, these two different styles each had their strengths. So, if struck by the Hyuga clan's gentle fist, even if it just grazed the skin, 
Hyuga Setsuna could use the chakra unique to gentle fist to damage use organs and circulatory system through pressure points. It seems like, aside from the original story's Hyuga Niji, the Hyuga clan's branch also produced other outstanding talents. Observing Hyuga Setsuna's relentless gentle fist strikes, you realized that this young man's strength was clearly in a different league than the other academy students. For a moment, you, filled with amazement, couldn't help but let his thoughts wander. According to the original Naruto storyline, it seemed there weren't many notable individuals or events in the Hyuga clan, apart from Hyuga Hinata and her cousin, Hyuga Niji. From the beginning to the end, the Hyuga clan seems to have no worthy person who can compete with the Uchiha clan. Among the younger generation of Uchiha, there was Uchiha Shursue, the strongest Jinjutsu ninja, and Uchiha Itachi, who reached the Kage level at the age of 13. Even the later Uchiha Sasuke, although his performance in the early stage was average, his cheating and upgrades in the later stage, and he even awakened the reincarnated soul of Indra and received the inheritance of the Sage of Six Paths, becoming one of the strongest in the ninja world. Not to mention the arrogant Uchiha Madara and the unstoppable Uchiha Bido, in short, throughout the history of the Uchiha clan, there are too many wonderful characters. On the other hand, look at the Hyuga clan. Throughout nearly a century in Kanoha, there hadn't been a single strong individual born into the clan aside from Hyuga Niji. He became an Jonin ninja. Sadly, without the protagonist's plot armor, he tragically met his end in the Fourth Great Ninja War, becoming the only one among Naruto's classmates to sacrifice his life. So, the sudden appearance of this genius Hyuga clan member, Hyuga Setsuna, was indeed unexpected for you. In the real world of Naruto, it appeared that there were many people and events not mentioned in the anime. It's over. Just as Yusuke seemed somewhat distracted, the Hyuga clan youth in front of him suddenly shouted. The pure white eyes burst forth with a sharp light, and his hands were spread out in front of you in a peculiar stance. You're already inside my eight trigrams realm. Sensing an invisible field enveloping his body, you faced Hyuga Setsuna's gentle fist stance, and his eyes widened. This is Gentle Fist Art, 8 Trigrams 32 Palms Without waiting for you to react, with a deep voice, Hyuga Setsuna suddenly shouted. His entire body rushed into Yu's embrace. His hands unleashed the Hyuga clan's secret gentle fist technique, the 8 Trigrams 32 Palms, like a fierce storm, striking all 32 vital points on Yu's body. No, it's you who's finished. However, faced with Hyuga Setsuna's deadly assault in front of him, Yu's gaze finally became serious, and his body gradually emitted a layer of lightning-like radiance. What is this? Sensing the blue-white electrical currents emanating from Yu, Yuhi Shinku, who was standing by the training ground watching the fight, suddenly fixed his gaze. What is this? At the same time, Hinata Setsuna, who had just performed the gentle fist 8 trigrams palm, felt a sudden surge of violent electricity emanating from Yu's entire body, freezing in place. Sizzle. With a burst of violent electrical noise, Hyuga Setsuna, who had rushed into Yu's arms, was assaulted by the intense electricity in the air. The genius of the Hyuga clan could only feel a tingling numbness throughout her body. Then, in the blink of an eye, he lost control of his own body, collapsing weakly in front of Yu. Darn it. What is this? Could it be, a lightning release ninjutsu? Just when victory seemed within reach, Hyuga Setsuna was defeated, his body paralyzed and powerless, kneeling in front of you. Hyuga Setsuna's face was filled with unwillingness, her gaze firmly fixed on you. Ah. It's something like an unfinished lightning release ninjutsu. As the violent electrical currents dissipated from his body, you looked at the unconscious Hyuga Setsuna before him and calmly spoke. Chidori, right? No, this could only be considered a prototype of Chidori. Chidori was a form transformation derived from the Raikiri, releasing the Chidori from the entire body, combining attack and defense in an A-rank lightning release ninjutsu. But you had only recently mastered the Chidori. In a short period of time, he could only develop it to a semi-finished stage. If it were the completed Chidori, the Hyuga Setsuna before you would have already lost consciousness, 
and it wouldn't be as simple as just body paralysis. All right. That's enough. At this moment, Yuhi Shinku, who had been observing from the side, suddenly spoke up. Your practical exercise, you, has already passed. You can come out now, and the rest of you can continue. Even the genius of the Hyuga clan, Hyuga Setsuna, had been defeated so easily. Yuhi Shinku naturally realized that Yu's strength was in a completely different league from the other students of his year. Continuing to keep him in the training ground wouldn't serve any purpose and would disrupt the balance of the other Ninja Academy students' practical exercises. What an awe-inspiring talent. Watching the white-haired youth calmly walk down from the training ground, Yuhi Shinku couldn't help but sigh inwardly. As someone whose strength was almost at the level of a jonin, he understood very well the difficulty of releasing lightning chakra nature transformations from the entire body. However, you, a five-year-old boy who had recently entered the ninja school, had achieved this, to such a degree. Under Yuhi Shinku's seemingly calm and composed exterior, his heart was already churning with shockwaves. I've already mastered the basic ninjutsu and theory of the ninja academy. Sitting on the playground after leaving the training ground, you mumbled to himself as he watched his fellow Ninja Academy students continue their practical exercises. It looks like in a little while I'll be able to apply for early graduation. With Yu's current level of strength and without revealing the abilities of his thread thread fruit, he could easily defeat all the other Ninja Academy students with just the ninjutsu and taijutsu of the Naruto world. So, continuing to stay here would serve no purpose. Becoming an independent ninja, as soon as possible, was Yu's original plan. That was an amazing battle just now. Yu, you're still the same, truly a genius ninja. At this moment, a cold but graceful voice from behind brought you back to his senses. Turning around, Yu's calm expression froze instantly. Yuga Senpai? Yes, standing on the playground behind you was Yuzuki Yugao, whom he had met once before. She was wearing a white sleeveless ninja skirt, and the straps were simply tied together, revealing a section of her creamy white skin. The appearance of this year's Ninja Academy beauty immediately attracted the attention of all the male students in the third class. Isn't that senior Yuzuki? She's so beautiful. Darn it. Did that guy, Yukushi Yu, have to steal even the favor of the school's beauty? Seeing Yuzuki Yugao walking directly towards you, a group of male students from the third class were filled with jealousy. Why are you here? Ignoring the envious and jealous glances from the surrounding students, Yuzuki Yugao, who had already walked up to him, asked you. Uh. Why not? You see, this little girl is quite nice. I like her. Quickly capture her. I want her, young man. Without warning, the seductive and devilish voice suddenly rang out. Conquer your sister. Stop scaring me by popping out like that. The sudden appearance of the demon almost made you spasm all over his body. After hearing the demon's words, you couldn't help but complain inwardly, aren't you a female? I am female, no doubt about it. Hearing Yu's inner complaint, the demon's seductive voice suddenly carried a hint of allure and cunning. But who says that females can't like other girls? Besides, this type of girl is my favorite dish. This? This is even allowed? Just as Yu's normal sense of morality and decency was about to be completely shattered by the demon within him. I didn't have class today. So, I made a bento with my own hands and came here to eat with you, Yukuen. Yuzuki Yugao, with her long, flowing purple hair, had already arrived in front of you. She gently lifted the delicately packed three-tiered bento box in her hand, and a faint smile appeared on her face, as delicate and enchanting as a lotus flower. Yukuen, I hope you don't mind? Mind? Only a lunatic would mind. Of course, I don't mind. Besides, I'm hungry too. It's really convenient that you're here, senpai. Seeing Yuzuki Yugao sitting beside him, you couldn't help but feel a surge of appetite whether it was because of the delicious food or the beautiful woman. Darn it. That woman. Why did Senior Yuzuki target you? Is being good-looking really that impressive? It's so unfair. 
While Yu and Yuzuki Yugao were sitting together enjoying their meal on the playground, the group of female students on the training ground had already exploded with jealousy. The appearance of the school's beauty had left these little fangirls feeling an unprecedented sense of crisis. Time passed by. In the mundane life of the Ninja Academy, a year went by. With Yu's astonishing performance at the Ninja Academy, the name Yakushi Yu began to circulate, alongside the genius of the Echiha clan, Shursui, in the village. Now, almost everyone in the village knew that after the son of White Fang, Kakashi Hitaki, Kanoha had produced two incredible young ninjas. Inside the Hokage's office, in Kanoha. Sitting there were the third Hokage, Haruzan Saratobi, Danzo Shimura, and two other high-ranking advisors, Hamura Mitokado and Koharu Yudatane. Applying for early graduation. The two application forms placed in front of the third Hokage caught the attention of Kanoha's top leadership. Exhaling a cloud of thick smoke from his tobacco pipe, the aging face of the third Hokage furrowed in deep thought. They've only been in school for a year, is it too early? As time advanced, the third great ninja war, now in its 45th year, had intensified. The ongoing conflict with the hidden sand village and a sudden attack by the hidden rock village placed immense pressure on Kanoha, with battles raging on two fronts simultaneously. Reports constantly came in from the front lines, casting a somber atmosphere over the entire Hokage's office. I've never seen students like them. It's not just the clone jutsu from last year's graduation exam. They scored perfectly on all ninjutsu, taijutsu, and ninja tools evaluations. Hearing the third Hokage's skepticism, the red-eyed Shinku stepped forward, kneeling on one knee, with a composed expression. He then revealed a hint of unexplainable sentimentality on his steady face. In every other aspect, they excel as well. Keeping them at the Ninja Academy wouldn't serve any purpose. So, Hokage-sama, I propose that Yukushiyu applies for early graduation. Seeing Yuhi Shinku step forward with his suggestion, another Chunin ninja, in the office, joined him. Likewise, Hokage-sama. I propose that Shursui Uchiha applies for early graduation too. He was their ninja instructor, from Team 2 of the Ninja Academy, also serving as Shursui Uchiha's homeroom teacher. Yakushiyu and Shursui Uchiha, huh? As the third Hokage gazed at Shinku and the other Chunin ninja before him, he mumbled the names that had recently been widely discussed in the village. Especially when he mentioned Shursui's name, a touch of nostalgia flickered in the elderly third Hokage's eyes. Shursui Uchiha, a descendant of Kagami. At the same time, both of these kids are only in their first year, right? Although he was surprised by the talents of the two young boys, the third Hokage still harbored some concerns. He turned his gaze to the other three top Kanoha leaders, to hear their opinions. They're in the first year, indeed. But wouldn't it be good? Besides, there are precedents, aren't there? At this moment, a deep voice resounded, and Danzo Shimura, seated beside the third Hokage, spoke up. These two kids, should be exceptionally rare talents for Kanoha, right? Letting them graduate early, is for their own good. With his low voice, Danzo Shimura, who had his left eye concealed by a white bandage, revealed an imperceptible hint of greed and ambition. Ever since he established the underground organization Root in Kanoha, Danzo had become even more eager for talented individuals. For example, a few years ago, Kakashi Hitaki, who graduated from the Ninja Academy at the age of five, was one of his long-cherished goals. Hmm. Danzo does have a point. Although he usually disagreed with Danzo, today the third Hokage surprisingly agreed with his suggestion. After a brief contemplation, the third Hokage continued, I didn't expect that in just one year, these two kids would apply for graduation. Their talents are truly astonishing. Yakushiyu and Shursui Uchiha's incredible talents reminded him of his own disciple, Orochimaru. No, even Orochimaru didn't reach this level at their age. Talented ninja like them should be honed early. Putting down his tobacco pipe, the third Hokage signed his name on the application forms. However, for the safety of these two kids. To graduate early, they'll need to undergo a rigorous test. Yakushi Yu. 
quite interesting. He's even on par with Shirsue Achiha. Seeing the third Hokage approve the early graduation applications of the two youngsters, Danzo, with his left eye concealed, gleamed with an inscrutable depth and cunning. If he wasn't mistaken. This should be the child adopted by that woman, right? Three days later. The news of Shirsue Uchiha and Yakushiyu applying for early graduation sent shockwaves through the entire ninja academy, and discussions were rampant throughout the village. Have you heard? That genius from the Uchiha clan, Shirsue Uchiha, applied for early graduation. In a tavern, a Chunin ninja chatted with a comrade. I heard about it a while ago. But besides Shirsue Uchiha, there's another kid who applied for early graduation. Another Chunin ninja, looking somewhat dismissive, spoke, although the Hokage approved it, it won't be easy for those two kids to graduate smoothly. Word has it that, in addition to the regular graduation exam, those two kids have to face three genin ninjas in combat to pass. Three genin ninja? Isn't that unfair? The previous ninja widened his eyes in disbelief. Usually, to graduate from the ninja academy, you just need to reach the level of a genin, right? This is what I heard while patrolling the Hokage's office. After all, it's a time of war. If we don't want those two kids to die on the battlefield, the requirements for them are bound to be more stringent. The Chunin ninja then said with a change of tone, but the Hokage's intention isn't for them to defeat three genin ninja, it's to see if they can survive the battle with them. I see. It seems that the third Hokage is really putting in a lot of effort for these kids in the village. In the back of the village, as the entire village discussed these matters. You continued to practice tirelessly, day after day, all by himself. Five-line technique. With a shout from you, his left hand formed into a claw, and he struck out at a large tree ten meters away. Boom. Five sharp and invisible lines tore through the air instantly cutting the tree, which was about the size of a child's hug, into six pieces. The towering tree fell, raising a cloud of dust in the forest. Foot shaving thread. But Yu's movements didn't stop. His body spun in midair, and he suddenly delivered a powerful whip kick using the inertia. Eight almost transparent, thread-like strands shot out from the tip of Yu's kicked foot. Boom. The huge rock in front of Yu rumbled. Rocks shattered, directly split in half by Yu's kick in midair. The residual force continued, cutting the long trench into the ground right in front of you. Such rapid progress. In just one year, you've developed the thread thread fruits abilities, to this extent? Without warning, the seductive voice of the devil resounded in Yu's ears. In the past year, Yu, who had made tremendous strides in strength, he not only elevated his mono lines training to multi lines, but also gradually unlocked other abilities and techniques of the thread thread fruit. The foot shaving thread was one of them. Foot shaving thread, creating eight almost transparent thread like strands from the tip of the foot, delivering a linear kick with sharp threads that could send an opponent flying with a single blow. This technique was somewhat like a kicking version of the multicolored lines, and its power could split a building in half. Even the strongest armor couldn't completely defend against it. TSK. This level is still far from enough. Hearing the devil's praise, you still seemed unsatisfied. In his amber light clear eyes, there was an unwavering pursuit of limitless power. Now is the most intense period of the Third Great Ninja War. In the face of the brutal meat grinder that is the battlefield, even the strongest abilities may not be enough. Water release. Hard Vortex Water Blade. Thinking about the cruel and intense battlefield outside, you clenched his teeth. His eyes emitted a hint of fierceness. His right palm created a raisin gan with a radiant blue light, just as he always did. Afterward, he carefully infused his own water chakra into it. Gush, gush, gush. A series of continuous booming sounds echoed as the raisin gan in Yu's hand underwent an incredible transformation. A highly condensed water gun formed in Yu's right hand, covering his entire right arm like a spiral water spout. It emitted a shocking roar from above, as if Yu was holding an entire, highly concentrated waterfall. What is this? You're insane. Stop this right now. 
This jutsu is too advanced for you at the moment. Seeing the drastic change in the raisin Ganon Yu's hand, the devil's voice had already turned to a panic. But it was too late. Before you could react with joy, the highly compressed high-pressure spiral water gun in his hand burst open. The terrifying impact sent his whole body flying. Still a failure, huh? Damn, that hurts. Thrown far away, you sat up from the ground. Looking at his right arm, which was now covered in countless wounds, dripping with blood, he sighed. Mystic Palm Jutsu Without any hesitation, you formed seals with his fingers. A green chakra was directly condensed on his left hand, and under this superb medical ninjutsu, Yu's heavily wounded right arm began to heal rapidly. Mystic Palm Jutsu, an advanced medical ninjutsu beyond ordinary healing techniques. It could rely on an astonishing chakra recovery speed to heal both internal and external injuries. It could also provide treatment to a target within a one-meter radius. Moreover, it could interfere with the circulation of chakra within a target's body from a distance, causing various effects such as inducing sleep, among other highly destructive abilities. Thus, it was known as a medical combat ninjutsu. However, due to the extremely high chakra control required, there were very few users, almost bordering on extinction. Even among numerous medical ninjas, those who could use the mystic palm jutsu were extremely rare. Being able to activate the cells in a wound completely and healing it in just five minutes was considered difficult, even for Tsunade, one of the legendary Sanin. But it took a year. With exceptional talent in ninjutsu, you mastered this highly advanced medical ninjutsu at the age of six. If people in the outside world knew, they would probably consider him a monstrous prodigy. Aren't you going to lose your arm? If you keep going like this, you'll lose your life. Seeing the serious injuries on Yu's arm finally healing rapidly under the mystic palm jutsu's powerful effects, the devil's tone was still anxious. Hard Vortex Water Blade is an original move developed by Yu based on the S-Class Ultimate Water Release Ninjutsu of the second-generation Hokage Senju Tobarama in the previous game Ultimate Generation Storm. There is no such ninjutsu in the Naruto world where Yu currently lives. Using it, he can fight at long and short distances, create a water vortex in his hand and condense the form into a water javelin, and spin quickly in layers without direction. If you throw it with force, a huge water spout will form as soon as it touches the target. It is super attack power and gorgeousness. It is the strongest known water release ninjutsu. You. You are really driving me crazy. Seeing Yu's dull reaction, the devil couldn't help but feel angry. The simple voice disappeared directly from Yu's ears, and he fell into a deep sleep again. What the? She got angry over this? Feeling the demon's anger disappear, you, standing in place, was somewhat puzzled. I just can't understand women like her. Much more troublesome than practicing ninjutsu. But. After regaining his focus, you looked at the sleeve of his right hand, which had completely shattered and disappeared and couldn't help but show a bitter smile. I guess trying to infuse a chakra nature transformation into the Raisingan without reaching Jonin level is still too much of a stretch. After all, I'm not like Naruto, who's a freak with both the Nine Tails and Uzumaki clan constitution. One year had passed, and you, now six years old, had grown slightly taller than the previous year. With hair as white as moonlight and amber-like eyes, his youthful face appeared even more exquisite and handsome. In the past year of relentless training, not only had his multi-lines abilities and ninjutsu improved dramatically, but even his chakra level had barely reached the level of a chunin. Under the transformation of the superhuman-type demon fruit, his chakra capacity far exceeded that of an ordinary chunin. You estimated that ordinary chunin were no longer his match, and even against jonin, he could ensure he left unharmed if he couldn't defeat them. Tomorrow is the graduation test. I heard from teacher Yuhi that, in addition to the regular exams, the third Hokage will also arrange a survival combat test with three genin ninjas. As the evening sun dyed the entire Kanoha forest red, under the fading light of the setting sun, you could see a trace of disdain curling up at the corner of Yu's mouth. Humph, with my current strength, dealing with three genin ninjas is a piece of cake. 
I just wonder if that guy, sure sway, can handle it. It wasn't so much the improvement in his strength that inflated Yu's self-confidence, but rather his current perspective and vision. Three gen and ninjas were indeed not a concern in his eyes. I hope tomorrow won't be too boring. Night fell. At this time, when the children at the Kanoha orphanage would typically be heading to bed, an excited commotion suddenly erupted. What? Applying for early graduation? Yakushi Nono, who had just returned to the Kanoha orphanage with exhaustion, looked in astonishment at you standing before her. In Yu's hand was a confirmation form for early graduation. Since applying for early graduation requires the consent of parents and guardians. Looking at Yukushi Nono, who wore a surprised expression, you didn't react too much. In this life, he didn't even know who his parents were, so the confirmation form for early graduation could only be signed by Yukushi Nono, the head of the orphanage who had adopted him. This. This is so cool. You, you're going to graduate after just one year of enrollment? At this moment, in the main hall of the wooden house, you and Yukushi Nono were surrounded by a circle of children. Yurushi, who was nonchalantly sitting there, had widened his eyes in amazement, and his envy and astonishment were written all over his face. So, does this mean that you will soon become an official ninja? He truly is an unquestionable genius. Meanwhile, the other friends around them were looking at you with disbelief. Especially the few young girls like Momoka and Mai, their big eyes were already filled with admiration and awe. He's only a year older than me, and he's already graduating from the ninja school? You. You're such an enviable guy. At this moment, watching you, who was being admired as if he possessed everything in the world, even Kabuto, who was standing in the corner, had a look of yearning and anticipation in his black eyes beneath his large glasses. But, you. Different from the children around them who blindly admired and looked up to him, Yukushi Nono wore a deeply worried expression on her gentle face as she looked at you, who was only six years old. You're only six years old, and you're already becoming an official ninja. Isn't it too early? Don't worry, headmistress. Understanding Yakushi Nono's concerns and worries, you smiled lightly. To successfully graduate from the Ninja Academy, I need to pass the test designed by the third Hokage himself. Besides, headmistress, I bought you a gift with the reward I received from treating the village as ninjas. You said up to this point and hesitated slightly. From the black and white kimono he had just put on, he took out a new pair of black framed glasses and handed them to Yakushi Nono. This is a gift I bought for you. This is. Looking at the gift you handed her, Yakushi Nono was taken aback. After opening the box, she found a pair of black-framed glasses that you had given her. When she put them on, the smile on the white-haired young man's face became clearer, but she felt her eye sockets gradually moistening. You, you. You child. At night, in the wooden house, the candlelight gradually warmed up the late autumn. Early the next morning, the training ground of the Ninja Academy was crowded with people. In addition to the Ninja Academy students and Ninja instructors who came to watch the graduation test, many other villagers and ordinary citizens from the village also gathered. After all, since the genius ninja Kakashi Hitaki, two more geniuses had applied for early graduation from the Ninja Academy at the age of six. Naturally, this attracted widespread attention in Kanoha Village. Everyone wanted to see how these two recently renowned geniuses from Kanoha would perform and what remarkable feats they would achieve. In fact, even the third Hokage, though he didn't personally attend, was observing every move through a crystal ball and the use of long-distance viewing jutsu from his office. Today's graduation test included a ninja theory exam and a practical test of the body flicker technique. For you and Shursui, there was no difficulty at all. They quickly achieved a perfect score, and the test everyone had been anticipating was the survival combat test. Yakushi Yu, Uchiha, Shursui. These six genin ninjas are your opponents for the upcoming survival combat test. Your task is to individually withstand the attacks of three genin ninjas and survive for five minutes. If you can survive, you will pass the exam. 
In the vast Ninja Academy training ground, Yu and Shursui, who were standing in front of Yu Hishinku, the most powerful ninja instructor at the Ninja Academy and now a Jonin, were listening attentively. Yu Hishinku, who had been promoted to Jonin yesterday, was naturally the chief examiner for this highly anticipated graduation test. Behind Yuhi Shinku, there were six adult ninja standing side by side, dressed in green vests and wearing Kanoha forehead protectors. They exuded a tough and practiced aura, clearly experienced elite genin ninjas who had completed hundreds of missions. So, which of you two wants to go first in the test? Yuhi Shinka gazed at Yu and Shursui, who were standing before him, with a fiery look in his eyes. You, your grades at the Ninja Academy, have always been higher than mine. This time, let me go first. Just as Yu was about to step forward, Shursui had already taken the lead and stood in front of him. Then, he turned to Yu and flashed a sly smile. Although they were in competition at the Ninja Academy, Yu and Shursui were best friends in private. Well, then. Let's see if you fail and cry like a baby afterward. Hearing Shursui's teasing, Yu, who didn't take it too seriously, responded with a playful remark. Even though they were competing at the Ninja Academy, privately, the two were the best of friends. Humph, if I can't even pass a test like this. Then I'll use my Sharingan to squeeze out some crocodile tears for you. Hearing Yu's retort from behind, Shursui's confidence was soaring. Looking at the three genin ninjas standing before him, he revealed a self-assured smile. The test begins. As Shursui took the stage first, Yuhi immediately announced the start of the assessment, with a solemn voice. Is that the young boy, the renowned Uchiha prodigy, Shursui? He certainly looks like a remarkable talent. Although he's an Uchiha prodigy, is it not too challenging for him to face three genin ninja simultaneously? When Shursui, the prodigious young Uchiha known throughout the clan, took the stage, the surrounding crowd immediately stirred with curiosity. The Uchiha clan itself was the foremost family in Kanoha and, indeed, in the entire ninja world, having maintained its prestigious status since the Warring States period. A prodigious young Uchiha, especially one with a reputation like Shursui's, naturally drew the attention of everyone. These youngsters nowadays are truly remarkable. They're applying for graduation at such a young age. As he looked at Shursui, who was only six years old, a plain-looking genin ninja remarked. Are you Uchiha Shursui? Your name has been frequently heard in the village these past years. Among the three genin ninja, the one standing in the middle displayed a hint of admiration. Shursui's name had been widely spoken of over the last two years. Humph, what Uchiha clan prodigy? He's just a six-year-old kid. The last genin ninja crossed his arms, a look of disdain on his face. No matter how much of a prodigy he might be, he was just a six-year-old child. How could he possibly be a match for elite genin ninja who had seen combat, and not to mention, facing three of them at once? Three seniors, please forgive me. In the face of the different attitudes of the three genin ninja, Shursui remained unfazed. He extended his hand, showing a courteous hand sign with two fingers in front of him. The opposite seal, this was the etiquette, between ninja, before training battles. After the battle, they would perform the reconciliation seal, signifying that they were comrades. Humph, at least this kid knows manners. Seeing Shursui's modesty and politeness, the demeanor of the lead genin ninja softened somewhat. He then raised one hand and formed an opposite seal himself. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. However, just as the last genin ninja completed the opposite seal, several piercing sounds cut through the air. Before their eyes, the air was filled with a dozen kunai blades spinning rapidly, approaching from various angles, above, below, left, and right. So fast. Seeing Shursui's incredibly precise kunai jutsu, the three genin ninja were startled, immediately discarding any underestimation they may have had. Spread out. Faced with Shursui's relentless kunai assault, the genin ninja in the middle shouted, and the three of them quickly moved apart. It's too late. Seeing the three genin ninja rapidly spreading out, Shursui's black eyes flashed with determination. Let's deal with one of them first. Clang, 
clang. With two crisp metallic clashes, in the astonished eyes of the middle genin ninja, he saw two kunai, initially thrown later than the others, changing their flight trajectory accurately and piercing him from an impossible angle. Ito. Just as he dodged to the side, he saw one of his companions among the three falling. The remaining two genin ninja were taken aback, and they exclaimed in shock. Wow. How is this possible? First, there was a stifling tension, and then the onlookers in the crowd erupted into loud cheers. For a six-year-old boy to face three genin ninja simultaneously, whether he could hold on for five minutes was a suspenseful question. However, not even five seconds into the practical survival assessment, an experienced genin ninja had already fallen. Witnessing this unbelievable scene on the training ground, everyone present was stunned. Such amazing kunai jutsu. To directly defeat a genin ninja. Indeed, sure sway, the Uchiha, prodigy known among the elite. One of the chunin ninjas in the crowd couldn't help but reveal astonishment. Shursui's exquisite kunai jutsu just now was something he himself couldn't achieve. Humph, these idiots. They underestimated Shursui's abilities too much. While everyone was shocked by Shursui's incredible strength on the training ground, Yu, who was observing the battle from the side, had a somewhat disdainful expression on his face. Graduated from the Ninja Academy at age 7, awakened the Sharingan at 8, became a Chunin at 10, and became the captain of an ANBU team and annihilated his clan at 13, defeating Orochimaru and cutting off one of his arms at a young age, these were the extremely abnormal records of Uchiha Itachi, also known as the Weasel God, of the original story. However, everyone might overlook one terrifying aspect Itachi's mentor and close friend, Uchiha Shursui had created records during this wartime era even more formidable than Itachi's. In the original story, when Itachi was still a genin, Shursui, who was a few years older, had already become a chunin. Later, he became the captain of Kanoha's ANBU, and please note, he was a captain, not just a squad leader. Leaving aside the highest-level genjutsu eye of the Echiha clan, the Kotoa Matsukami, and the renowned Shunshin no Jutsu, Shursui's Kunai Jutsu was unquestionably superior to Itachi's. So, without exaggeration or understatement, when everyone saw Shursui's astonishing strength on the training ground, there was only one person present, a transmigrator named Yu, who wasn't surprised. Damn Uchiha kid! Seeing Shursui take down one of his comrades in an instant, the two remaining Gen and Ninja no longer dared to be careless. One of them, taking advantage of his companion's cover, quickly maneuvered behind Shursui. Shouting loudly, he swung a sharp kunai toward Shursui's back. Be careful. The crowd watching around them tensed up. It seemed that no one wanted to see the young Uchiha prodigy collapse on the field. Bang. However, just as the sharp kunai in the genin ninja's hand struck Shursui's back, his face suddenly paled. Shursui in front of him had transformed into a white puff of smoke and vanished. Substitution Jutsu? How is that possible? When did he form the hand sign? As the genin ninja was shocked, a pitch black kunai was already against his throat. Just when your comrade was providing cover for you. He also created an opportunity for me to form the hand sign. With a calm voice, Shursui, appearing behind the genin ninja, spoke. The crowd watching around was all amazed at the formidable power displayed by Shur Sui before them. What's this? Shadow Clone Jutsu? A six-year-old brat can actually use the Shadow Clone Jutsu? Some sharp-eyed ninjas in the crowd had already realized that what Shur Sui was using wasn't an ordinary clone technique, but the advanced Shadow Clone Jutsu. The Shadow Clone Jutsu was a ninjutsu developed by the second Hokage, Tobarama Senju. Unlike regular clone techniques that create illusory duplicates, the Shadow Clone Jutsu could create solid duplicates of the caster, evenly distributing chakra to each clone, making it a flawless beerink ninjutsu. Don't be too arrogant, kid. Even arrogance should have its limits. Seeing his two comrades being defeated by the six-year-old Shursui, the last genin ninja on the training ground finally realized that his dignity as a genin ninja was under serious threat. Fire Release, Fireball Jutsu 
As the words fell, the last Gen and ninja on the training ground distanced himself from Sher Sway. He quickly formed hand seals and took a deep breath, then spat out a large fireball towards Sher Sway. It's fire release. Seeing the last Gen and ninja release a fire release ninjutsu, the spectators around the training ground began to stir again. Some had recognized it as a D-rank fire release ninjutsu. Using fire release in front of the Echiha clan ninja. I don't know if you're being careless or ignorant. Facing the fire release ninjutsu being released toward him by the last gen and ninja, Sher Sway, who was standing still, wore a somewhat helpless smile on his face. A bright light radiated from his black eyes, and his hands instantly formed six hand seals. Fire release, great fireball jutsu. Under the gaze of everyone present, Sher Sway, having completed the hand seals, took a deep breath. In an instant, an incredibly massive fireball burst forth on the training ground. The scorching temperature continuously distorted the air in front of the spectators, making it the most common searing fire release ninjutsu in Kanoha's arsenal. The signature fire release ninjutsu of the Echiha clan. What tremendous power! This kid is undoubtedly a genius. Watching the massive fireball on the training ground and feeling the scorching heat in the air, all the ninjas and civilians in the vicinity were impressed by the astonishing strength and talent of the Echiha boy before them. Ah! It's so hot! It burns! It burns! The fireball released was instantly covered by the gigantic fireball Shursway created. The last gen and ninja on the training ground, seeing himself about to be overwhelmed by Shursway's powerful fire release ninjutsu, began to scream in agony. In this practical survival test, Uchiha Shursway wins. He passes the assessment successfully. Seeing Shursway defeat the three gen and ninjas before him, the supervising proctor, Shinku Yuhi, declared Shursway's victory. Two figures rushed out beside him, and two Chunin ninjas quickly went up to rescue the last Genin ninja. We won? He actually won. A six-year-old kid defeated three Genin ninjas. Witnessing the graduation assessment that was originally meant to last five minutes culminate with six-year-old Uchiha Shursway defeating three Genin ninjas, the crowd around the training ground erupted in amazement. What's going on? Am I dreaming? The Uchiha clan's genius, Sher Sway, is truly remarkable. This is too much. Is he really just a kid who hasn't even graduated from the ninja school? The battle had ended, but as they watched Sher Sway descend from the training ground, the onlookers were still in shock from the incredible and exciting battle they had just witnessed. How was that? Don't feel pressured, you. After finally coming down from the training ground, Sher Sway playfully winked at you. Cut the arrogance. If I'm not mistaken. Those moves you showed, just now, probably aren't your full strength, right? Facing Sher Sway's victorious return with his mischievous smile, you couldn't help but smile back. However, his amber eyes slightly narrowed, showing an intriguing look. You really can't hide anything from me. Surprisingly, Sher Sway's hidden strength had been seen through by you at a glance. Sher Sway's face immediately revealed a wry smile, but it quickly turned into an eager expression as he encouraged you. If you also pass this test successfully, I think you'll get to see my full strength then. Having known each other for so long, Sher Sway had always looked forward to and had high hopes for you, who had exceptional talents. However, the two had never truly sparred. If they had the opportunity today, Sher Sway also wanted to see who was stronger between him and you. Now, for the second round. It's time for Yakushi Yu to face three Genin ninjas. The rules are the same, survive for five minutes in real combat to pass the test. Before the crowd had a chance to fully digest the incredible battle they had just witnessed with Sher Sway, the supervising proctor, Shinku Yuhi, had already announced the start of the second round of the practical survival test. It's finally my turn. Hearing that it was finally his turn, you let out a sigh of relief. His clear amber eyes flashed with a glimmer of light as he walked toward the training ground. Again, it's starting again. Yakushi Yu. I heard he's a genius too. Look. The kid is entering the stage. 
Seeing that the second round of the practical survival test was about to begin on the training ground, the crowd gradually quieted down. After all, he's not from a big ninja clan. It's already quite impressive to survive for five minutes against three genin ninjas in real combat. Miracles like what happened with the Echiha clan's genius, Sure Sway, are unlikely to happen again, right? It's hard to say. I heard that this Yakushiyu's rankings at the ninja school are even higher than Uchiha Sure Sway's. Everyone, shut up. Let's watch. School rankings and real combat are two different things. Although the crowd began to quiet down, discussions among them continued. Unfortunately, after witnessing the spectacular battle where Sure Sway defeated three Genin ninjas just moments ago, the spectators around the training ground found it hard to have high expectations for the upcoming battle. After all, success couldn't always be replicated. Moreover, you wasn't a ninja from any prominent clan, so they couldn't expect a child to achieve what only the Echiha clan's extraordinary genius could. You. Come on. You're the best. Show those guys what you're made of. You're the most talented kid in our orphanage. As you entered the training ground, he suddenly heard familiar voices from the crowd. Yurushi? Mai? Momoka? And? Turning his head, you saw that it was indeed Yurushi, Mai, and some of their fellow orphans from Kanoha's orphanage who had squeezed out from the crowd and were cheering loudly for him, raising their arms. Headmaster? You all came? Not only that, you also spotted Yakushi Nono among the onlookers. She was wearing the black framed glasses he had given her yesterday, standing beside Yurushi and the others, silently encouraging him with her eyes. You've got to do your best, you. Let all of Kanoha, let everyone see your talent and abilities. Standing among the crowd, she stared closely at you, who was standing in the training ground. Yakushi Nono clenched her hands tightly under her sleeves revealing her unsettled emotions at the moment. Do your best. When you passed by the proctor, you heard a quiet word of encouragement from Shinka Yuhi, the usually reserved and quiet proctor of his class. After all, as the ninja instructor and class teacher for Yu's class, Shinka Yuhi had high expectations for you, who had shown remarkable strength and talent. No choice. I didn't expect the headmaster and the others to be here. It seems I'll have to take this a bit more seriously. At this moment, you felt the eyes of everyone in the area fixed on him. Yu's lips curled into a faint smile, but his eyes began to emit a sharp gleam. That Uchiha kid from earlier did indeed impress, but I wonder how you'll perform. Standing in front of you, there was a mature-looking genin with a fierce aura, exuding the presence of someone who had been on the battlefield. Hey, kid, I advise you to go back to school for a few more years. Don't let the Echiha kid's performance get to your head. He's a rare genius ninja, from the Echiha clan. Beside him, another genin with a scar on his face taunted you, clearly looking down on him. We've all been on the battlefield, and we're not like you, a kid who's never killed anyone. Don't cry if you wet your pants later, just go home and drink milk. Another genin with a cold expression directly stood next to him, taunting you with indifference. What a headache. Do you guys know? Facing the mockery and disdain of the three genin in front of him, you suddenly spoke. What? Hearing Yu's unexpected words, the expressions of the three genin in front of him visibly stiffened. Those who can't survive past one episode in the world of anime are often the most arrogant extras like you. Gazing at the three genin in front of him, who he couldn't even be bothered to remember, Yu's lips curled into a scornful smile. The rules of this practical assessment are to survive for five minutes, but I think it won't be necessary. Because, it will only take me five seconds to end this battle. What is he saying? Five seconds? With Yu's not particularly loud voice, the entire training ground fell into silence. Not only the three genin in front of him, but even the spectators around began to think that this white-haired kid was utterly mad. Who did he think he was? The god of ninja that quelled the warring states, Hashirama Senju? Or the Echiha Madara who dominated the ninja world? Ha ha ha! What a kid who's living in a dream! 
Sure enough, after Yu's seemingly plain words, the three genin in front of him burst into laughter. He must have been provoked by that Uchiha kid from earlier. Kids like him who don't know their place usually die first on the battlefield. After saying that, the genin with the scar on his face took out a sharp kunai and revealed a cruel smile. Forget about it. Maybe this kid got scared. Let's go, and let this ignorant kid learn what a real ninja is. With those words, the three genin in front of you simultaneously made their move, taking out their weapons and charging at you from different directions. Although they were taunting him, the three genin were not too careless. Just a moment ago, they had become a laughingstock after being defeated by the Echiha clan's genius. They didn't want to repeat the same mistake with this white-haired kid. Is it starting? You have four seconds left. Rabbit, monkey, sheep. As you watch the three genin rushing toward him from different directions, his amber eyes sharpened, and he instantly formed three hand seals. Chidori. Amidst the stunned gazes of everyone present, a dazzling and blinding blue-white lightning erupted in the spacious training ground before them. Zap, zap, zap. It was as if a thousand birds were calling at the same time. Accompanied by the piercing and deafening noise, a violent and radiant lightning sphere appeared in Yu's left hand. The magnificent sight immediately attracted the attention of everyone in the area. What is this? What kind of ninjutsu is this? Seeing you suddenly display this jutsu in the training ground, everyone present was shocked because they had never seen this ninjutsu before. That visible chakra? What a joke! A jutsu of this level? How could it appear on a kid who hasn't even graduated from the ninja academy? Among the onlookers, a senior ninja couldn't help but exclaim. After all, at this point in time, no one had ever witnessed a lightning release jutsu like this one. Kakashi Hitaki was only 11 years old and hadn't developed this A rank lightning release jutsu yet. A forbidden jutsu. It's actually a forbidden jutsu. That kid can use a jutsu of this level? Furthermore, upon hearing the faint sounds of the thousand birds jutsu emanating from the training ground at a distance, even the third Hokage, Hiruzen Saratobi, who was observing through his crystal ball in his office, as well as Danzo Shimura and the other high ranking officials of Kanoha, all showed expressions of shock. I've never seen a lightning release jutsu like that. Could it be that it's his own? Being known as the ninja professor, the third Hokage was proficient in five elemental natures of ninjutsu. However, at this moment, he found himself stunned, realizing that he had never seen a lightning release jutsu like this before. In his wise and experienced eyes, there had never been a moment as surprising as this. Yakushi Yu, huh? What an astonishing talent. His left eye, exposed to the world, was fixed on the crystal ball before him, in which a white-haired youth bathed in thunderous light. Hidden within the billowing sleeves, Danzo's fist clenched unconsciously, his eyes filled with boundless possessiveness and greed. It's time. The battle will end in an instant. Returning his gaze to the training ground, he looked at the three genin ninja who were completely intimidated by Chidori in front of them. Amid the dazzling glare of raging electricity, Yu's body slightly crouched. Boom! In the moment when a nearby leaf fell to the ground, the ground beneath Yu's feet shattered into pieces. In the eyes of everyone in shock, Yu on the training ground instantly turned into a streak of lightning and vanished from the spot. That's so piercing. What's that strange sound? As you sprinted in a flash, those watching could only hear a continuous, piercing scream in the air. Some even covered their ears in discomfort. That's not a strange sound. That's a lightning strike. Powerful lightning chakra brings incredible physical agility. Just as everyone was astonished by Chidori's exaggerated display. Next to him, the proctor, Shinku Yuhi, couldn't take his eyes off the white-haired youth who had turned into a lightning streak on the training ground, his calm demeanor completely shaken. Just a sudden sprint can generate such sound. This kid. He's simply a monster. You are the first. In the midst of everyone's stunned reverie, you, who had turned into lightning, had already appeared in front of the grim-faced genin ninja. What kind of speed is this? This ninjutsu. 
he's going to kill me. Seeing Yu, who had just appeared before him in a flash, the originally stern Jen and Ninja was now completely dumbfounded with fear. Sizzle. Before this Jen and Ninja could react, the violent Chidori chakra on Yu's left hand had already brushed past his neck. The Jen and Ninja with the grim face only felt a tingling sensation in his body, and his vision went dark as he collapsed to the ground, losing consciousness. If this wasn't an examination, that last move would have pierced your heart. Glancing at the fallen Jen and Ninja beside him, you wasted no time and turned into lightning once again. Although it had only brushed past his neck, the immense Chidori chakra had instantly knocked him unconscious. Too, too fast. A Genin. Genin Ninja was defeated like this? Seeing you defeat one Genin Ninja in less than a second on the training ground, the people around, almost unable to believe their eyes, couldn't close their mouths. Don't be so reckless, kid. Earth release, Earth wall. Seeing his two comrades fall in an instant, the scar faced Genin Ninja, both shocked and angry, quickly formed seals with his hands. Rumble. After completing the hand seals, the scar-faced Jen and Ninja forcefully pressed his hands against the ground. A huge rock suddenly rose from the ground under his feet, directly blocking Yu's angle of attack. This is a C-rank Earth release. It seems he's an elite among the Jen and Ninja. Seeing the skillful Earth release ninjutsu displayed by the scar-faced Jen and Ninja, someone in the crowd recognized him as an elite ninja among the lower ranks. Boom. But before the words could even leave their mouths, the enormous rock that had risen from the ground was instantly shattered. Are you trying to block a Chidori with earth release? Are you an idiot? In the midst of the flying rubble and the terrified gaze of the scar-faced Jen and Ninja, you, who had turned into lightning, had already instantly broken through and appeared in front of him. Leaf Hurricane Without any unnecessary words, you, who had sprinted to the scar-faced Jen and Ninja, turned and delivered a powerful spinning kick, sending the scar-faced Jen and Ninja flying. Stimulated by the powerful Chidori Chakra, Yu's entire body's physical activity was greatly enhanced. The scar-faced Jen and Ninja, who was kicked by Yu, felt as if he had been struck in the chest by a giant hammer. He was sent flying and crashed into a nearby tree, falling to the ground and losing consciousness. No, don't come any closer. Watching his two comrades being instantly defeated by Yu, the last remaining Jen and Ninja, though he was retreating in fear, accidentally leaned against a tree behind him. Boom. In the next second, this Jen and Ninja only felt a deafening roar in his ears. Yu, who had turned into lightning and disappeared earlier, was now standing in front of him. The violent Chidori on his left hand had brushed past his cheek, leaving a painful wound. The entire tree behind him broke, startling countless birds in the forest. Just five seconds. Sensei Yuhi, can you announce the results of the assessment now? As the violent electrical current on his left hand gradually dissipated, you calmly and indifferently spoke. The genin ninja standing before him had opened his eyes wide in terror, unable to move, his legs trembling uncontrollably. If, just now, Yu's Chidori had deviated even slightly, his head would undoubtedly have been blown apart. Silence. The training ground, surrounded by a crowd of people, fell into a suffocating silence. Everyone stared dumbfoundedly at the astonishing white-haired youth before them. Cough, cough. Hearing Yu's reminder, Shinku Yuhi, who had also been stunned, finally regained his composure. After an awkward cough, he withdrew his astonished gaze and loudly announced, this practical survival test. Yakushi Yu is the winner. He has successfully passed the assessment. He won. He actually won? In just five seconds, he had defeated three genin ninja. Looking at the white-haired youth who had silently descended from the training ground, almost everyone present thought they were dreaming. The previously subdued atmosphere at the scene finally erupted. My goodness! All three Gen and Ninja were defeated in an instant. Can a six year old kid really do this? That jutsu just now. Did you all see it? People were going crazy. Everyone in the vicinity had lost their minds. The powerful and magnificent Chidori, 
the youth overflowing with monstrous talent. His miraculous performance, which had rivaled the Echiha clan's genius sure sway, had already left them in awe. Now, Yu's battle, where he instantly defeated three genin ninja like a monster, had completely shattered their previous definition of ninja. You're amazing, you. You are the most outstanding genius in history. At this moment, the group of kids, Yurushi, and the others, among the crowd, were so excited that their faces turned red, and the stunning scene left them breathless. After descending from the training ground, Yu saw Shir sway beside him, and his calm face was now filled with an unprecedented passion and fighting spirit. As expected, my judgment was correct. You, you are indeed my destined opponent. A fateful encounter? Feeling the intense gaze of those around him, you raised an eyebrow in annoyance. Why do these words sound so familiar? Kid, are you possessed by that guy, Mike Guy? Uchiha Shursue, Yakushi Yu. Both of you have successfully passed today's test and evaluation. Starting today, you are officially Leaf Shinobi. At that moment, a solemn and majestic voice came from the crowd. The Hokage? The Hokage is here too. The people around them murmured in hushed tones, making way for the arrival of an elder wearing a white Hokage robe and a straw hat. It was the third Hokage, who had been in his office earlier, but couldn't resist coming to the Ninja Academy's training ground after witnessing Yu's five-second defeat of three Genin ninjas. He was here to oversee the most highly anticipated graduation ceremony in history. Upon hearing the third Hokage's words, Tu Chunin walked up to Yu and Shir Sui, handing them headbands engraved with the Leaf Village symbol. This marked the moment when Yu and Shir Sui officially became Genin Leaf Shinobi. That was an incredibly impressive battle. I'm delighted to see that Leaf Village has produced two talented young ninjas. Standing on the training ground, the third Hokage smiled warmly as he watched the two young prodigies donning their leaf headbands. But today's special graduation exam has yet to produce a top student. So, Uchiha Shursue, Yakushi Yu, are you both interested in one final showdown? The final showdown? Upon hearing this, Yu and Shursue, who had just put on their leaf headbands, exchanged glances, seeing the eager gleam in each other's eyes. Yes. We haven't determined the top student yet. The Hokage is right. Let's have one final showdown. Both of them are prodigies. Who's the stronger one? The words of the third Hokage immediately piqued the strong interest of everyone present, and they began to clamor. Yu and Shursue had delivered a spectacular performance in their previous battle, leaving everyone in awe. Originally, most people had favored Uchiha Shursue, the prodigy from the Uchiha clan. However, after witnessing Yu's monstrous performance just moments ago, doubt crept into their minds. Which of these two prodigies was truly superior? Admiration for the strong. This principle held true not only in the world of the Hokage, but also in the real world. Since the Hokage has spoken. Come on, you, I've been itching to spar with you. As the words reached their ears, Shursue had already taken his place on the training ground, motioning for you to join him with a wave of his hand. You leave me no choice. Feeling the surging battle intent emanating from Shursue and the gaze of the onlookers focused squarely on them, you shrugged with a hint of a smile and took a step toward the training ground. Don't cry if you lose, Shursue. He wanted to see just how formidable Shursue's renowned Shunshin Shursue had become in terms of real strength. Yakushi Yu, you just finished a battle. Do you need time to recover your chakra? All eyes were fixated on the two young prodigies standing opposite each other in the training ground. Looking at Yu, who had just gone through a thrilling battle, the third Hokage asked. No need. Yu shook his head, signaling that he was ready. Having reached the Midchunin level and with his exceptionally high chakra reserves due to his modified body, Yu's chakra had already recovered to several times that of an ordinary Chunin after just one short moment. Then, let the battle begin. Upon hearing Yu's response, the third Hokage waved his hand, announcing the start of the battle. Swoosh, swoosh. In the instant the third Hokage's words fell, a piercing sound of breaking air could already be heard. 
After witnessing Yu's incredible performance in defeating three Genin ninjas in five seconds, Shursui was fully focused, and eight kunai instantly appeared in his hands. With a flick of his wrist, the eight kunai shot rapidly from various angles toward you. What a splendid kunai technique! Several elite chunin in the crowd marveled at Shursui's kunai throw. In terms of skill and precision, he was on par with them, and in some aspects, even surpassing them. Come on, you. Let me see your true strength. As the eight kunai whirled through the air, Shursui stared intently at you, his black eyes radiating fierce determination. However, you extended both his hands, and just as effortlessly, eight kunai appeared between his fingers, as if by magic. Faced with Shursui's incoming kunai, he casually swiped them away. Clang. 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 Ting. To everyone's astonishment, all eight kunai thrown by Shursui were effortlessly deflected and fell to the ground. Although you had spent the past year focusing on physical combat, ninjutsu, and harnessing the power of the thread fruit, he hadn't forgotten his mastery of kunai techniques. Dealing with Shursui's attacks was child's play. Impressive. It seems that Yukushiyu's ninja fundamentals are not inferior to the Echiha prodigy, Shursui. Witnessing Yu's exquisite kunai technique and his calm demeanor in the face of Shursui's challenge, the bystanders were once again impressed with Yu's abilities. Swoosh! Swoosh! As the eight kunai and kunai were landing on the ground, the two of them simultaneously disappeared from their original positions, racing towards each other at incredible speeds. Bang! Bang! The two figures collided in an instant. Yu's palm blocked Shursui's approaching knee, and Shursui's hand intercepted Yu's incoming punch. It appeared to be a standoff at first, but soon, Shursui began to lean backward under the pressure. What? How can? At the same age, his strength is so much greater than mine? Feeling the overwhelming force coming from the opposite side, Shursui was astonished. It was only after their first direct collision that he realized the strength emanating from Yu's body was far from that of an ordinary six-year-old. My body might be a bit different from the norm. When it comes to physical combat, you don't stand a chance against me. Looking at Shursui, who was gradually being forced back, Yu lightly shrugged, his lips curving up into a faint smile. If it came to a contest of physical abilities, there was no one in their age group who could even come close to challenging him, not even the prodigy Shursui. Shursui, if you don't take this seriously, the honor of the Echiha clan will dim today at your hands. As you advanced, relentlessly pushing forward against Shursui, he used his words to provoke him, hoping to draw out Shursui's full strength. Well, in that case, I won't hold back. The honor of the Echiha clan must remain untarnished. Hearing you mention the Echiha clan, Shursui's expression finally turned serious. Swish. With those words, you felt a sudden flash before his eyes. An identical figure to Shursui darted out from behind him, leaping high into the sky. It was a shadow clone. So fast. When did he form the hand seals for it? Seeing Shursui's incredible shadow clone technique, even you couldn't help but be astonished. He hadn't noticed when Shursui had formed the seals. Be careful, you. Fire style, great fireball jutsu. Another Shursui, who had leaped into the air, reminded you, swiftly forming hand seals. Taking a deep breath, it seemed he was about to unleash a massive, scorching fireball towards you. Fire style, huh? Yu's hands were held by Shursui's shadow clone in front of him, and he saw Shursui's main body above ready to release the fire-style jutsu. However, Yu's calm expression remained unchanged, and a mysterious smile curled on his lips. You're too slow, Shursui. Did he realize it? Sensing Yu's enigmatic smile, Shursui, who was about to release the fire-style jutsu, suddenly felt his heart skip a beat. Zap, zap, zap. But it was too late. Accompanied by a burst of violent crackling, Yu's two outstretched hands suddenly erupted with a wildly intense electric current. Shursui and his shadow clone felt their entire bodies go numb and paralyzed, unable to move. Lightning release, Chidori stream. 
By releasing an electrifying current throughout his entire body, you created a widespread but less destructive version of the Chidori Jutsu, primarily meant for paralyzing opponents, combining both offense and defense. After a year of training, you had finally mastered this Chidori variation. Incredible Ninjutsu! Seeing you demonstrate the Chidori stream, even the third Hokage, hidden under his hat, couldn't help but express his amazement. At only six years old, he's already mastered this level of nature transformation and shape transformation. This kid is an absolute genius. Boom. Boom. But before everyone could fully process Yu's dazzling performance, two muffled explosions rang out. Yu's electric shock hit both Shizui's in front of him, turning them into two white smoke clouds. Both of them were shadow clones? Seeing this sudden change, everyone was left stunned, including you. I didn't expect your lightning release jutsu to have this kind of variation. If I hadn't held back, I'd have already lost, right? Hearing the familiar voice from behind, you instinctively turned around, only to see Shursue's incredibly fast kick expanding in front of him. Bang! Caught off guard, you quickly raised his hands to block. However, faced with Shursue's powerful kick, you couldn't stop the momentum and was sent flying into the air. Whoosh! As you was sent into the air, he witnessed Shursui's swift movement once more. Is that, the body flicker technique? Witnessing Shursui's astonishing speed on the training ground, not only the surrounding spectators, but also the third Hokage himself couldn't help but be amazed. The body flicker technique. Although not considered an advanced ninjutsu, the ability to use high-speed movement techniques so effortlessly in battle typically required a ninja to be at least a chunin or higher in rank. And they need a way to react to the high movement speed lest they end up smashing into a wall and killing themselves. Body Flicker Technique He truly deserves the title of the flickering Shursue of the future. Suspended in midair and faced with Shursue's continuous rapid movements and powerful strikes, you couldn't help but marvel at the multiple Shursues that appeared in his vision. After images left behind by his sheer speed. Wait, his eyes? Using his elbows to block another sudden burst of the body flicker technique from Shursue, Yu's expression displayed an incredible revelation. Sharingan? Unbeknownst to you, Shursue's originally black eyes had transformed into a deep crimson hue. Each eye bore a black tomo that shone eerily continually refracting an otherworldly radiance. Sharingan. He actually awakened the Sharingan. Not only you, but also the third Hokage, observing Shursui's eye transformation, revealed an expression of utter disbelief on his aged face. Awakening the Sharingan at the age of six. What kind of joke is this? Witnessing the transformation in Shursui's eyes, you felt like a herd of alpacas had just stampeded through his heart. After all, the Sharingan was the bloodline limit that had made the Uchiha clan famous in the ninja world. It had distinct levels, the single Tomo Sharingan, providing enhanced dynamic vision, capable of seeing through high-speed physical techniques, the double Tomo Sharingan, able to copy most ninjutsu and physical techniques, the triple Tomo Sharingan, granting the ability to predict an opponent's movements and cast Jinjutsu with one's eyes. Beyond these regular Sharingan levels, you knew there were even more advanced stages, the Manjikyu Sharingan, the Eternal Manjikyu Sharingan, and ultimately, the Rinnegan, the Eyes of the Sage of the Six Paths. This was why, upon arriving in this world, you had lamented not being born into the Echiha clan. Because, whether for support or combat, the various abilities of the Sharingan were second to none in the world of Shinobi. It's over, you. From the moment I awakened these eyes. Every one of your movements has been seen through by me. Ignoring the shock of everyone present, Sher Sway, with his eyes now a deep crimson, locked his gaze onto you below. Flash slice. In the split second as you descended to the ground. Sher Sway, gently tapped the ground and swiftly drew the small tonto that had never left his back, activated the body flicker technique, and transformed into a streak of light. A fiercely sharp slash descended from the heavens. Although it was just the single Tomo Sharingan, it was enough for Shursue to gain incredible strength. Flash Slice, it's a technique created by Shursue, similar to Kanoha's flowing dance of the leaves. 
First, use a powerful upward kick to send the opponent into the air. Then, while in mid-air, use the body flicker technique to deliver consecutive strikes. Finally, descend from above to deliver a powerful slash to the mid-air opponent. All of the previous attacks were expertly blocked by you, but now, Shursway had activated the Echiha clan's bloodline limit, the Sharingan, with the unwavering belief in his victory for this final blow. What? The Sharingan of the Echiha clan? He awakened the Sharingan at the age of six. Such talent is terrifying. Is it coming to an end? What a pity. That you, he's also an incredible genius. Watching Sher Sui, who had activated the Sharingan and was launching a meteor-like strike from above in the training ground, everyone couldn't help but feel regret for you. As civilian ninja, this six-year-old boy had managed to battle against Sher Sui, a genius who awakened the Sharingan, to this extent. It was something none of them could have achieved at his age. No, the real battle is just beginning. A calm and familiar voice echoed across the training ground, drawing everyone's attention once again. Clang! Just when everyone thought that you had been defeated, a sudden and intense clash of metal resounded, causing everyone to widen their eyes once more. Before their eyes, a massive spider web appeared out of nowhere in the vast training ground, and it forcefully blocked Shursui's strongest strike from the sky. What is that thing? Everyone was left stunned, staring at the enormous spider web that had appeared out of thin air. What is this? Seeing the massive spider web blocking his surefire strike from the sky, Shursui's expression froze, and his blood red Sharingan emitted an unusual radiance. It has finally appeared. You, your bloodline limit. Bloodline limit? Shursui's voice, though not loud, spread throughout the silent training ground leaving everyone with expressions of disbelief. That kid. He actually possessed a bloodline limit? I didn't see any hand seals. It's not a secret jutsu. At the same time, as they watched you release the enormous spider web seemingly effortlessly, the third Hokage, who stood nearby, had a complete change in his expression. This kid. Could it really be? With his stunning lightning release jutsu and overwhelming strength, if he also had a bloodline limit. The third Hokage suddenly realized that he couldn't find the right words to describe the white-haired youth, before him. I never expected you to awaken the Echiha clan's Sharingan so early, sure sway. There's no choice. It seems I'll have to stop warming up and end this battle quickly. Amidst the shocked gazes of everyone present, you calmly spoke. He extended his left hand forward, releasing a massive spider web, composed of countless invisible threads, into the air. Spider's Nest, this technique had an unparalleled defensive power that could withstand almost any physical attack, even Shursui's full-strength strike couldn't break through it. Is that all, just a warm-up? You really dare to say that, you. With the impenetrable and sturdy Spider's Nest, between them, you was able to gaze calmly at Shursui's resolute face. However, since the ability of the thread thread fruit had already been exposed, it was time to end this battle. Five color threads. With these calm words, use right hand waved as if casually. Five nearly invisible threads instantly tore through the air. What is this? Seeing you release this technique without the need for hand seals, Shursui's blood red Sharingan contracted. His heightened dynamic vision allowed him to vaguely sense five extremely dangerous, invisible threads in the air. Bang! Not far behind Shursui, a large tree was instantly cut into six pieces, falling into the nearby forest, raising a cloud of dust. Threads? At the same time, the third Hokage, who stood nearby, also noticed the invisible threads released by you. However, Witnessing the immense destructive power caused by Yu's seemingly casual attack, he couldn't help but be astonished. Incredible destructive power. Thread release? An ability I've never heard of. Could it be an unknown bloodline limit in the ninja world? Muttering to himself, the third Hokage realized that he had never heard of such a bloodline limit. Humph. Is it body flicker again? What a hassle. After missing his attack, you watched as Shursui used the body flicker technique to swiftly move around the training ground, 
evading one invisible thread after another. Shursui's face, which had remained calm, finally began to show signs of seriousness. If I get hit by that technique, the battle will truly be over. I've got you. His brain racing as he thought of countermeasures, Shursui suddenly heard a voice that shook him to the core. Bang! Something incredible happened. As Shursui, who was flying through the air at high speed, looked back, he realized that he had been tripped by something. He stumbled and was sent flying. Threads? When did they? Oh no! As Shursui's body soared through the air, he turned to see an almost imperceptible invisible thread stretched across the ground behind him. Just as you used the body flicker technique to evade my pursuit earlier, I took the opportunity to secretly create this thread. For me, it's a simple task. Seemingly seeing through Shursui's thoughts, you explained with a hint of a smile, and his eyes emitted two incomprehensible glimmers. In this battle, he had already won. Second release for today. Fire release, Sage Phoenix Fire. Witnessing Yu's strength, which surpassed his own expectations, Shursui was forced to tap into all his hidden potential. In midair, struggling to maintain balance, Shursui swiftly formed hand seals and exhaled a burst of flames, instantly hurling six shurikens into the flames, dividing the fire into six small fireballs. In the blink of an eye, six small fireballs, each with a spinning shuriken inside, fiercely approached. If they hit, you would suffer dual damage from fire release and shurikens. Such astounding resilience and talent. Truly worthy of being the future strongest Uchiha. Too bad your life ended too short this part you left unsaid. Watching the incoming fireballs mixed with spinning shurikens, even you couldn't help but admire Shursui's extraordinary talent and indomitable spirit. But it ends here. Clang. 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 Several crisp metal clashes rang out. To everyone's astonishment, you swiftly slashed all six fire shurikens that Shursui had just released into two pieces using razor-sharp threads he summoned. Shursui, who had just landed on the ground, hadn't even regained his balance when he suddenly saw a ninja sandal, which seemed to grow infinitely larger before his eyes. Yu's figure had somehow appeared right in front of him. Boom! Tremendous force struck Shursui, sending him flying across the training ground. Even with the Sharingan, the body can't keep up. This sensation must be quite unpleasant, Shursui. After kicking Shursui out with a powerful blow, Yu's movements did not pause. The chakra surging within him quickly condensed in his right palm, and in an instant, a swirling blue-white chakra sphere, known as the Raisingan, appeared in his hand. Vanishing Raisingan. That jutsu? Seeing the Raisingan in Yu's hand, the third Hokage, who had been observing from the sidelines, widened his eyes as if witnessing something incredibly shocking. I've never seen a jutsu with that form. Could it be him again? Moreover, there were no hand seals involved. As the ninjutsu master, the third Hokage instantly recognized the tremendous value hidden within Yu's peculiar jutsu. After all, this was an A-rank ninjutsu that the fourth Hokage, Minato Namikaze, had spent three years developing in the original story. What kind of jutsu is that? I've never seen it before. Another A-rank jutsu. And it's an unorthodox ninjutsu. This is unbelievable. Could this kid be the reincarnation of the Sage of the Six Paths? Seeing you wielding the Raisingan, the spectators around the training ground, including the Hokage himself, were nearly paralyzed with shock. What if? Let's use this jutsu. To end this battle, sure sway. With his gaze fixed on Shursui, who was sent flying by his earlier strike, you didn't hesitate. He immediately hurled the Raisingan from his hand. Everyone widened their eyes, and time seemed to freeze in that moment. However, after you released the Raisingan, it emitted a brief whirlwind in mid-air, then quickly vanished into thin air. Disappeared? Did the jutsu fail? Upon witnessing the Raisingan you had thrown suddenly disappear midway, Everyone in the vicinity wore puzzled expressions, feeling a sense of regret. Wait. Among all the people present on the training ground, only Sher Sway, who had been sent flying, suddenly widened his Sharingan eyes in bewilderment. 
That guy, you. He couldn't have easily failed the jutsu. Boom. Sure enough, the entire atmosphere seemed to vibrate. In the incredible eyes of everyone present, the Raisingan, which had clearly disappeared, reappeared. It exploded with astonishing power, sending Shursui hurtling away. How is this possible? Seeing the vanished Jutsu reappear and unleash such incredible power, the crowd, including the third Hokage, couldn't help but exclaim in astonishment. What kind of incredible Jutsu is this? Silence fell over the entire training ground as everyone stared in disbelief at Yu, who stood nearby, and the fallen Shur Sui. Sorry, Shur Sui. I've won. Amidst the stunned gazes of the onlookers, Yu announced. I declare that this year's ninja school graduation assessment. The first place goes to the top student, Yakushi Yu. Second place. Uchiha, Shur Sui. After a long pause, the third Hokage, who had been lost in thought, finally withdrew his stunned gaze and loudly announced the final results of this highly anticipated graduation assessment. He won. It's Yakushi Yu who won. He actually defeated the Uchiha clan's prodigy, Shur Sui. What an unbelievable kid. What an unbelievable jutsu. Did you see that? The jutsu he used actually vanished. Upon hearing the third Hokage's announcement, the spectators around the training ground finally erupted into excitement. Everyone wore expressions of incredulity as they fervently discussed the battle they had just witnessed. Damn. It hurts so much. You, you really didn't hold back. At this moment, not far from the scene, Shur Sui, who was lying on the ground, finally managed to sit up with great effort. The upper half of his clothing had been completely torn to shreds by the Raisingan, and although you had adjusted the chakra's size, the Raisingan's immense destructive power had still severely injured Shur Sui. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll heal you right away. Seeing Shur Sui in this condition, due to his own actions, you felt somewhat embarrassed as he walked over and crouched down in front of him. Mystic Palm with swift hand seals, Yu's right hand condensed a ball of green chakra, which he pressed onto Shursui's wounded body. Under the effects of this advanced medical ninjutsu, Shursui's body, which had been heavily injured by the Raisingan, began to rapidly recover. This kid. He's also a medical ninja? Upon seeing Yu perform the medical ninjutsu, the third Hokage, initially shocked but quickly realizing something was amiss, showed a rare expression of astonishment on his aged face. No. This is. Mystic Palm. It's actually Mystic Palm. Such an extraordinary kid. How could this be possible? Seeing six-year-old you using advanced medical ninjutsu that even most Leaf Village medical nin couldn't perform, the third Hokage experienced more shock on this day than in his entire life. You, sure sway. Both of you, come to my office tomorrow. Finally retracting his gaze filled with astonishment and complexity, the third Hokage issued a stern command before vanishing from the spot. After all, it was a critical time during the Shinobi World War, and his office was filled with reports and documents waiting for him to handle. Did you hear that? The Hokage is summoning them individually. Yakushiyu and Uchihashirsue. It looks like Leaf Village is about to produce two remarkable figures again. Upon hearing the words left behind by the third Hokage, those present became even more certain of Yu and Shursui's limitless potential. They had received a personal summons from the third Hokage himself. Thank you, Yu. At this moment, Shursui's wounds were finally completely healed thanks to Yu's medical ninjutsu. Impressive medical ninjutsu. I have to admit, I'm in awe of your abilities after today's battle. However, don't get too confident. I'll catch up to you soon. Seeing Yu's exceptional medical ninjutsu, Shursui couldn't help but show a hint of admiration. Is that so? Well, we'll see when you catch up. Facing Shursui, who acknowledged his skills but refused to admit defeat, Yu shrugged indifferently. Awakening the Manjikyu Sharingan as Shursui of the Body Flicker, he was undoubtedly powerful, but you wouldn't remain stagnant either. Besides, he had other trump cards in reserve. 
If he managed to obtain the puppeteer jutsu and augment it with the devil laws, Shursui would never be able to catch up to his rate of powering up. With that, you turned his head and saw Yurushi, Mai, and the other orphans from the Leaf Orphanage excitedly rushing towards him. And Nono, standing not too far away, watched him with gentle yet complex eyes. Once you and the others had left, the crowd of onlookers gradually dispersed. However, from that day forward, apart from Uchiha Shursui, the Leaf Village's number one prodigy, the title of Yukushi Yu, had spread like wildfire throughout the village, almost like a plague. His dazzling Chidori, the vanishing ninjutsu, and the mysterious bloodline limit, thread release, all contributed to you becoming the center of attention and discussion among the people. Even in these turbulent times of war, Yu's reputation as a prodigy began to spread beyond the borders of the hidden Leaf Village. The next day, everyone in the Leaf Village was discussing the unprecedented graduation test from yesterday. At this moment, a fierce debate was unfolding in the Hokage's office. I suggest you give up on this idea, Danzo. The third Hokage removed his Hokage hat and slammed it onto the table, his tone leaving no room for negotiation. I will not hand over both of them to you. Hiruzen, you, and Shursui. These two are the most promising prodigies of their generation. Shimura Danzo, who stood before the third Hokage, stared back unwaveringly, his voice deep. With the strength of Root, I can undoubtedly develop them into exceptional shinobi. After witnessing the unprecedented talent and abilities of Yu and Shursui in the Hokage's office yesterday, Danzo couldn't contain himself any longer. He had come to the office early in the morning to request the two prodigious youths. I'm sorry. I believe that Root excels at cultivating tools rather than shinobi. In the face of Danzo's persuasion, the third Hokage, Hiruzen Sarutobi, remained calm. I have faith in your abilities, but I also believe that if they were to grow in the Umbu Black Ops, they would be no less skilled. Hiruzen. Seeing the third Hokage's resolute refusal, Danzo clenched the cane in his hand, his eyes growing colder. Ignoring the third Hokage's continued words, Danzo walked towards the door, leaning on his cane. Yes, he was the Hokage, the highest authority in the Leaf Village, so he had the final say on the matter. With that in mind, Danzo's grip on his cane tightened. Remember that you forced me into this, Hiruzen. Only in my hands can the true value of the Leaf Village be realized. Danzo. Watching Danzo leave, the third Hokage sighed deeply. They had once been disciples under the second Hokage, and now they had embarked on completely different paths. Leaf Village, Bustling Streets You walked amidst the bustling crowd. Now, after the unprecedented graduation test yesterday, you, who had been bestowed the title of Leaf Village's number one prodigy, attracted attention wherever he went. His exceptionally handsome appearance occasionally caused quite a commotion, making you feel even more out of place. Oh my! I didn't expect you to be quite popular with the girls. Just as you was about to quicken his pace to escape the gaze of the crowd, a familiar voice suddenly sounded. Two graceful figures appeared in front of him. Anko? Yugao? Hearing the slightly teasing tone, you looked up and saw none other than Midarashi Anko and Yuzuki Yugao. Um. Yukuen, I haven't congratulated you on officially becoming a shinobi. With a shy smile, Yugao handed a packet of three-colored dango to you. These dango took me a while to get. Consider it a gift to celebrate your graduation. Dango? Accepting the dango that Yuzuki Yugao handed over, you was momentarily surprised and took it from her. These dango were from the most famous dango shop in the Leaf Village, the same shop where, Midarashi Anko, loved to go in the original story. Although you wasn't particularly fond of sweets, he was curious about trying this renowned delicacy. Well, thank you, Sister Yugao. After taking the gift from Yuzuki Yugao, you looked at the beautiful girl who had dressed up carefully today, and his eyes brightened. I can't finish all of these by myself, so how about we share? You're not too bad, after all. Before Yuzuki Yugao could respond, Midarashi Anko, who was straightforward, had already taken a string of dango from Yu's hand and started eating. 
She also cast a somewhat mischievous and suggestive glance at you and Yugao. I mean. Are you two on a date? A date? PFF. Upon hearing Midarashi Anko's words, Yugao's cheeks turned bright red, and you almost choked on his own saliva. Indeed, Yugao, who was now nine years old, was exceptionally pure and beautiful, and she had shown a considerable amount of affection toward you. However, as a time traveler with the soul of an adult, you couldn't help but feel a twinge of guilt about going on a date with an underage girl from the world of anime and manga. Moreover, Yu's physical age was only six years old, making it an insurmountable barrier in his mind. A date? Let's wait until I'm a bit older. Cough, um. After an awkward throat clearing, you looked at Yugao and asked, Senpai, you? No need to call me Senpai. Before you could finish his sentence, he was interrupted by the shy Yugao, just call me Yugao. Yug. Yugao, huh. All right, you thought with a twitch of his mouth. It seemed impossible to dissuade this girl from her early romantic interests. But, speaking of that. You, kid, are truly a monster. At this point, Midarashi Anko's voice came from the side. She was eating dango and looking at you with an incredibly strange expression. You graduated from the Ninja Academy in just one year, and even defeated Uchiha Shursue, a genius. It was just luck. You tried to be modest, but Midarashi Anko interrupted him. It looks like I'll have to step up my game. I can't let a junior like you surpass me. Midarashi Anko quickly finished her dango and, without waiting for you and Yugao to react, disappeared from their view in a puff of smoke. She really reminds me of a female version of Naruto. Watching the carefree Midarashi Anko disappear from sight, Yu's amber eyes flickered. I wonder if she's about to encounter Orochimaru. A year had passed, and Midarashi Anko was now ten years old. This year, she would graduate from the Ninja Academy. According to the plot, she should soon become one of the three apprentices of Orochimaru and start going on missions with him. Anko is just like that. When it comes to dating. I hope you don't mind, you. Mind? Of course not. I should be thankful for your favor, Yugao. After collecting his thoughts, you looked at the girl by his side. She seemed a bit down, so he flashed a reassuring smile. Since I'm calling you Yugao directly, you can call me you. Okay. Then, I'll call you you. Hearing her response, the bright and beautiful girl immediately regained her energy. Let's go. You treated me to Dango, and now I'll treat you to ramen. Walking together on the bustling streets of Kanoha, Yu's eyes were drawn to the sign of a ramen shop not far away with the words Ichiraka Ramen. He had already decided what to eat for lunch. Good afternoon. What can I get for you too? As soon as they entered the shop and took their seats, a rather plain-looking man greeted you and Yugao with enthusiasm. Two bowls of pork chashu ramen, please. Sitting beside Yugao, you looked at the unassuming ramen shop owner. He couldn't help but wonder if this man was the young version of Tucci, the owner of Ichiraka Ramen. After placing their orders, Yu and Yugao enjoyed their steaming bowls of ramen. The pork chashu was tender, but not greasy, and the broth was rich and flavorful. The hand-pulled noodles had the perfect texture. Yu and Yugao savored every bite, finding the ramen to be truly authentic. It was no wonder that the protagonist, Naruto, was so fond of this ramen shop in the original story. Not even ten minutes had passed, and the two bowls of ramen were completely empty. After paying the bill, you led Yugao out of Ichiraka Ramen. I'm so full. By the way, you, now that you've become a genin, do you have any plans? As they exited Ichiraka Ramen, Yugao rubbed her slightly bulging belly and turned to look at you. Normally, newly graduated genin were assigned to a ninja team led by a jounin to carry out missions. Given the current state of war in the ninja world, even genin might be assigned to frontline missions or auxiliary tasks. I'm not sure yet. I think I might be assigned to the Umbu Black Ops. Hearing Yugao's question, you casually rested his hands behind his head. He thought about the meeting with the third Hokage earlier, where he and Shursui were summoned to the Hokage's office. 
you wondered how the Hokage would arrange their future missions. The Umbu Black Ops? Yugao was momentarily surprised by Yu's answer, but she soon relaxed. That's fine. At least you won't be sent to the front lines. The Umbu Black Ops, officially known as the Special Assassination and Tactical Squad, was similar to a Special Forces unit. Its members were selected from outstanding ninja in the village and were primarily responsible for protecting the Hokage, gathering intelligence, and carrying out covert missions, including assassinations. Umbu members wore white masks resembling animals during their missions, and information about their missions and identities was highly classified. The Umbu reported directly to the Hokage and were divided into several squads, each led by a captain who received and executed mission orders. Although Umbu missions were dangerous, Yugao hoped that you would stay in Kanoha to work with the Umbu rather than being sent to the front lines of the war. So, let's end it here for today. Later, I still need to visit Lord Hokage's office. The two of them walked to the intersection of Kanoha Street, and suddenly, Yu stopped in his tracks. He looked at the purple-haired girl, Yugao, who stood before him and smiled. The dango you gave me were delicious. See you next time. Well, okay. Although there was some reluctance in her heart, you said that he still had important matters to attend to, so Yugao reluctantly waved goodbye with a smile and even gave him some encouragement. Keep up the good work, you. You're the best ninja. Don't worry, I won't lose to anyone. It wasn't until he watched the graceful figure of Yugao with her purple long hair disappear at the end of the street that you finally withdrew his gaze. He turned and walked into a nearby deserted forest path. Although the date with the 2D girl was wonderful, you wouldn't forget that improving his strength was currently his top priority. On the road to the Hokage's office, the wind rustled the trees on both sides of the road, and you suddenly stopped. You've been following me all this time since a while ago. Isn't it time to show yourselves? You, who had stopped, suddenly spoke abruptly to the empty forest path in front of him. Swoosh. Swoosh. As soon as he finished speaking, two shinobi appeared instantly. They both wore cat-faced masks, with one in front and one behind, blocking Yu's path. Are you Yakushiyu? Lord Danzo requests your presence. The cat-faced masked ninja in front directly blocked Yu's way. Lord Danzo? I'm sorry, I don't know him. Please step aside. Hearing this name, Yu's heart trembled slightly, but he remained calm on the surface. He bypassed the ninja in front and continued walking. Shimura Danzo. In his heart, you couldn't help but feel a wave of emotions. He knew this character well from the original work. Danzo, the leader of Kanoha's underground organization, Root, was the disciple of the second Hokage, Toborama Senju, and a rival to the third Hokage, Hiruzen Sarutobi. He was ruthless and used any means necessary to achieve his goals, with a deep and cunning mind. He was undoubtedly a sly old fox. Without a special reason, you didn't want to get involved with such a troublesome character. However, it seemed that the two root shinobi in front of him weren't going to let you leave so easily. They blocked his path again. Well, it seems we have no choice but to knock you out and take you with us. The ninja in front pulled a sharp kunai from his sleeve, and the one behind drew a tanto from his back, surrounding you. Looking at the two root shinobi blocking his way, you knew that his performance in yesterday's graduation exam had attracted Danzo's attention. They wanted to recruit him into the Root organization. I didn't expect you guys from Root to be so bold, openly attacking a fellow villager in Kanoha. Shinobi selected to join the Umbu Black Ops and Root were, at the very least, Chunin level ninja. Judging from the aura emanating from these two, you could roughly sense that their strength was at the Chunin level. Humph, no one will know. Because soon, we'll knock you out and take you with us. As they spoke, the root shinobi in front thrust the kunai towards Yu's heart. This was actually a feint, with the real purpose being to force you to reveal a weakness, allowing them to seize the opportunity. Humph, too chunin, huh? But it's a pity. I think you've underestimated my strength. Faced with the kunai aimed at his heart, Yu's eyes turned cold. Raitan, Chidori Sanban. 
Yu's reaction was faster than the root shinobi's. He suddenly waved his right hand, the sleeve of his kimono flaring up. A blue-white lightning radiance burst forth, and dozens of extremely thin Chidori Sanban shot out into the air. Chidori Sanban, similar to Chidori, it was a form developed by Yu based on Chidori. While its power wasn't as strong as Chidori and Chidori Stream, it excelled in long-range attacks and had a rapid casting speed, with a high quantity. What is this? The root shinobi in front hadn't expected you to be so fast with his attack. Caught off guard, he desperately tried to defend, but his hands were still numbed by Yu's powerful right hand chakra. My body, can't move. With several Chidori Sanban piercing his body, the intense right hand chakra had directly paralyzed the muscles and nerves of the root shinobi. At the same time, the other root shinobi with a tanto had closed in on you. The cold blade was almost touching Yu's skin. Kanova Whirlwind Without turning around, Yu swiftly swung his right leg backward like a deadly viper lunging at its target, kicking the tonto-wielding root shinobi away. Chakra Scalpel Taking advantage of the moment when he kicked the tonto away, Yu quickly formed hand seals with both hands, and his body instantly disappeared from where he stood. The next second, when he reappeared, Yu was behind the root shinobi. A special blue chakra blade had already bloomed in his hands. Hmph. The blue chakra blade in Yu's hand quickly sliced across the back of the root shinobi's neck. The root shinobi gave a muffled groan and fell to the ground, losing all fighting capacity without even the chance to scream. Chakra Scalpel By striking the target with chakra-infused hands, this A-rank advanced medical jutsu could cut through the target's body without causing any external injuries. With his current strength, you could only maintain the chakra scalpel at a length of 30 centimeters. However, it could cut through a human body without leaving any external wounds, making it a terrifying medical jutsu in terms of lethality. Chakra scalpel? Seeing their comrade fall to the ground without a scratch, the other root shinobi, who had been paralyzed by Chidori Sanban, was shocked. Originally, because of Yu's youthful appearance, they had underestimated his strength. However, they hadn't expected you to easily perform such advanced lightning and medical ninjutsu. Swish. But at this moment, a blue light flashed across his neck. The root shinobi's eyes turned crimson as he collapsed to the ground, no longer breathing. Faced with these two root shinobi who had attacked him with lethal intent, you didn't have the slightest intention of showing mercy. This is troublesome. Looking at the two root shinobi who had fallen to the ground without any wounds, you slowly dispelled the blue chakra blade in his hand. He furrowed his brow slightly. This was the first time he had truly killed someone. Fortunately, the chakra scalpel could damage the target without causing any surface injuries, avoiding the gruesome scene of copious bloodshed, which spared you the discomfort of killing someone for the first time. Clap, clap, clap. At this moment, applause came from the side, and Yu was surprised when he realized that he missed the presence of someone else following him. Turning around, he saw a man standing under a tree nearby. The man was dressed in a white kimono, had a bandage over his right eye, a cross-shaped scar on his chin, and leaned on a crutch with one hand. Efficient and clean. No hesitation in taking a life. Yu Yakushi, you are indeed a born shinobi. Witnessing Yu's swift retaliation against two root organization Chunin, the man who had suddenly appeared seemed to be praising him with an expressionless face. Danzo Shimura Seeing this man's appearance, Yu's pupils contracted. A splendid battle. Although I already had a high opinion of you, I didn't expect your abilities to be even greater. Standing by Yu's side, Danzo praised with a serene smile on his face as if the two subordinates who had just died were merely useless pawns. If one didn't know his true nature, they might mistake him for a benevolent elder, concerned for Kanoha. However, you, who had seen the original storyline, easily detected a strong sense of possession and ambition in his eyes. This is troublesome. I didn't expect Danzo to come in person. Although his facial expression remained unchanged, Yu's heart was already in turmoil. From the aura emanating from Danzo, it was clear that he was a figure of Kage level. Although he wasn't among the top Kage level shinobi, 
his strength far surpassed that of any Jounin. Despite having other trump cards, Yu, who had only recently advanced to the level of Chunin, had no confidence when facing Danzo. Yu Yakushi, join my route. You will definitely receive more advancement here than in any other department. Danzo looked at Yu and directly stated his intention. My organization lacks a genius shinobi like you, who excels in both combat and medical ninjutsu. After many years of development and growth, Danzo's rude organization gradually absorbed various elite individuals from Kanoha, such as the Yamanaka and Aburame clan's ninja, who excelled in secret arts. Danzo even planned to infiltrate the Echiha clan, the largest and most prestigious clan in Kanoha, in an attempt to gain control of the Sharingan. Yesterday, in the Hokage's office, after witnessing Yu's extraordinary talent displayed in the graduation assessment and his defeat of Uchiha Shursui, Danzo had immediately set his sights on this exceptionally talented young ninja. I'm sorry, Lord Danzo, you replied. I'm currently on my way to meet the third Hokage, so I can't come with you. In response to Danzo's invitation, you did not explicitly refuse. However, you had no favorable impression of Danzo a man who constantly claimed to act for the good of Kanoha while implementing dark schemes. In the original storyline, many people believed that Danzo's character had been whitewashed when he chose to die along with Uchiha Sasuke, but you did not share that view. While Danzo may have had lofty goals for the village, his ruthless methods, the innocent lives he used as experimental subjects, and his willingness to send his own subordinates to assassinate the third Hokage for personal gain were inexcusable. As a former member of Team 2 and being comrades during their youth, you found it difficult to accept Danzo's actions. Hee hee, don't be in a hurry to refuse, Danzo said, smiling. You should be the child adopted by Yakushi Nono, right? From your exceptional medical ninjutsu, it's clear that you've not only inherited but also surpassed her talent in medical ninjutsu. But you may not know that your foster mother, Nono, used to be a shinobi, serving in our route. She was my most outstanding intelligence and medical ninja, and even served as the head of the medical corps in Kanoha. Danzo's words were cut off, and Yu's amber eyes narrowed slightly. Yakushi Nono's past was known to you, but he didn't understand why Danzo suddenly brought it up. You carefully observed the man in front of him, trying to discern something from his expression. By the looks of it, you don't seem surprised by what I just said? Bringing up Nono's past, Danzo noticed that Yu's facial expression hadn't changed as he had expected. Only Danzo's left eye was visible, and his gaze grew somewhat sharp. However, it doesn't matter. I believe we will have the opportunity to cooperate in the future. But soon after, Danzo's smile reappeared on his face. I'll be waiting for you en route, because... From the look in your eyes, I can tell that we are of the same kind. He he he. Leaving behind an eerie laughter, Danzo turned and walked away. By the way, you don't have to worry about killing those two pieces of trash as well. If they can't even handle a recently graduated academy student, Root doesn't need such waste. As they passed by the bodies of the two Root Jonin killed by Yu's chakra scalpel, Danzo gave an indifferent order. Two other Root ninja immediately appeared from the forest on both sides carrying the corpses of the two ninja that you had killed with his chakra scalpel. Then, they vanished in an instant. Me and Danzo. Are we really the same kind of people? Staring quietly at Danzo's departing figure, you contemplated the words Danzo had just spoken. Despite his bright and promising goals, you knew that he had the potential to become just another troubled and misguided shinobi due to the influence of figures like Danzo or Orochimaru. However, in this world, you would never waver in his convictions, except when it came to the people he cherished. Soon, the afternoon arrived. Guided by an ANBU ninja, you reached the entrance of the Hokage's office. Come in, a steady voice called from inside. Lord Hokage, you is here, the ANBU ninja announced, bowing before stepping aside. Seated behind his desk, the third Hokage greeted you with a warm smile. You, you've arrived. Yes, Lord Hokage, you replied respectfully, taking in the grandeur of the Hokage's office. He noticed that Shursui was also present. Shursui, the third Hokage addressed him, please go back for now. I need to speak with you privately. 
Acknowledging the order, Sher Sui left the office with a reminder. Don't forget to report to the ANBU tomorrow. Yes, Lord Hokage. I'll take my leave, Sher Sui responded, offering a bow before exiting. As he passed by you, his gaze held a meaningful glance. Umbu. It seemed that Sher Sui had indeed been assigned to the ANBU, you thought as he watched him depart. I wonder why Lord Hokage called me here today, you mused aloud. With Shursway out of the room, it was just you, and the third Hokage left. While you felt the third Hokage's gaze on him, he, too, examined the venerable leader of the village. Unlike the graduation ceremony the day before, today the third Hokage wore an old-fashioned shinobi armor, befitting the wartime circumstances. Although he was only fifty-four years old, his hair had turned white, making him appear much older than his contemporaries. Apart from his occasional displays of immense presence and the occasional gleam in his hazy eyes, the third Hokage seemed like a kindly elder statesman. I apologize if I made you uncomfortable, the third Hokage said, recognizing Yu's unease. He picked up a smoking pipe from his desk and offered a gentle smile. Seeing a talented young ninja like you emerge from our village fills me with pride. Lord Hokage, may I inquire as to the reason you summoned me today? You asked. The third Hokage continued, I have a proposition for you. Would you be willing to accept a mission from the Hokage and join the Kanoha Medical Corps? The Medical Corps? You replied with surprise. He had assumed that, like Sher Sui, he would be assigned to the ANBU under the direct command of the Hokage. It was unexpected to hear the third Hokage suggest placement in the Kanoha Medical Corps. I've taken the liberty of reviewing your records, the third Hokage explained. You were adopted by the former head of the medical corps, Yakushi Nono. Yu's initial astonishment faded as he understood the reasoning behind the offer. The Kanoha Medical Corps was currently stretched thin due to the ongoing war. Every day, a steady stream of injured frontline shinobi required medical attention. Your extraordinary medical ninjutsu skills could be a tremendous asset to our medical team, the third Hokage elaborated. So, what do you say? I accept, you replied without hesitation. The prospect of being assigned to a specific department was of little concern to him, he believed that focusing on honing his abilities was the key. Furthermore, the current Third Great Ninja War was at its most intense stage. Kanoha had recently faced off against Sunagakure and been ambushed by Iwagakure's forces. Kirigakure's ninja were also showing signs of aggression, looking for opportunities to join the conflict. As you, who had often treated injured Kanoha shinobi for rewards, was well aware, there was a severe shortage of medical ninjas in Kanoha. His exceptional medical ninjutsu skills, coupled with the third Hokage's desire to have him join the Kanoha Medical Corps, made perfect sense. Good, the third Hokage said, clearly pleased with Yu's quick response. His gaze softened even further. In addition to your medical ninjutsu, I also know of your remarkable talent in ninjutsu and combat. Pausing for a moment, the third Hokage continued, to compensate for your potential shortcomings in ninjutsu training after joining the medical corps, I'm making all the scrolls in this office available to you. Furthermore, if you ever wish to seek private guidance from me, the opportunity is yours. Yu was taken aback by the generosity of the offer. The third Hokage not only granted him access to all the scrolls in the Hokage's office, but also extended an invitation for personal tutelage in ninjutsu by the revered god of shinobi himself. What an incredible opportunity! The third Hokage, renowned as the god of shinobi, had trained legendary ninja who had shaken the shinobi world. He possessed expertise in all major forms of ninjutsu, including mastery of the five elemental affinities. Allowing you to receive guidance from him could accelerate his growth tremendously. That's very generous, Lord Hokage, you said, astonished by the unexpected windfall. Regardless of how the outside world might perceive the third Hokage, whether as a benevolent and indecisive leader or as a successful or failed ninja and politician, there was no denying that he regarded every member of the village as his own family. Even in the case of Orochimaru, who had strayed far from the straight path and even harmed Kanoha in the original story, the third Hokage could not bring himself to kill him. 
As a ninja and a politician, the third Hokage might have had his failures. However, as a compassionate and caring leader, he had undoubtedly succeeded. Your talent and abilities are the best I've ever seen, the third Hokage remarked. Even at your age, you surpass Orochimaru's abilities, by far. After a deep, searching look at you, the third Hokage stood and put on his white Hokage cloak. Let's go. We still have some time. I'll take you to the medical corps. With that, the third Hokage led you out of the Hokage's office. Along the way, the other ninja they encountered saluted and cast curious glances at the white-haired young ninja accompanying the Hokage. We've arrived. This is the Kanoha Ninja Hospital, the third Hokage announced as they reached their destination. Following the third Hokage, you observed numerous injured shinobi scattered throughout the hospital's corridors even before entering the building. Guided by the third Hokage, they finally arrived at a hall that bore the sign Kanoha Medical Corps. Thanks for watching, please like share and subscribe.